Back. 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 And the beautiful thing about this is if you say anything, Tanny, it, you don't want you don't want to be in the podcast. We can mm-hmm. edit it out. It's okay. So let That's it all out nice. now. Go on. Uh, uh, do you want me to start slaying slurs? I'm kidding. I'm not gonna say slurs. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta say that. Uh, anyway, um, so, yo, guys, <laughs> welcome <What's up? laughs> to the backlog podcast number 21 with our guest, Tanichi. Uh, Hello, would you, would you prefer uh, Tenny or Tanichi? Uh, I think Tenny is easier to say, so I prefer Tenny. Okay. Uh, awesome. Um, so, I guess, you know, did, did you guys uh, have anything awesome going on this week, or? <laughs> Just an ordinary week. Nothing, nothing too interesting. Okay. Well, uh, usually what we do, one of the first things we do is we start off by talking about our weeks. Um, so that'd mm-hmm. be like anything weird funny or you know aggravating whatever it may be or it could be mundane like maybe you just like you went to school and you streamed or something funny happened on stream it doesn't doesn't really matter um so i know i i might have mentioned it before but as our guest did would you like to go first huh let me see something interesting that happened this week well Today was actually pretty eventful. I think I've had really bad luck today. Oh. Um, so yeah, so I started off the day with like a, a nightmare. Uh, a ver- like I don't, I personally don't really have nightmares, but I had a really bad nightmare yesterday. It had like all the components of like a bad nightmare. So oh, wow. it was, it was also it was very detailed, and I remember everything. So really? it was like, uh, yeah, and I even wrote it down in my notes because I didn't want to forget because it, it was so wacky. So. Um, it kind of started off with, like, a, uh, I don't know why, there was, like, a fish contest that's, like, going on in my house. There's, like, someone that's trying to pick the best fish, and everyone is, like, <laughs> look at my fish. This one is, like, super rare with, like, this kind of, like, genetic, like, mutation and why it should be chosen. So everyone is, like, in my house, and we have, like, we have, like, a bunch of fishes at our house as well. And I'm, like, looking around, and there's there's this huge tank that in, like, the corner of our of our house that I looked at. And inside is this fish that looks like a human but backwards like upside down like his head is his feet and his feet is his, is his head Whoa. and uh and it was really weird and i was like hey so do i do i talk to you looking at your feet or do i talk to you looking at your head because it seems like your eyes <laughs> are down there and and then he was like you know just just look at my feet like my head feet i was like okay <laughs> and, and then we made friends and it was it was going great and i thought it was gonna be a wholesome dream where i you know befriend this weird upside down human fish yeah. right Absolutely. and then and then yeah, but then we, as we were like walking ar- around our house, hanging out, right? Um, there's this, uh, there's this room, and I heard something behind it, and I opened it, and I opened the room, and it was like dark, and my mom was sitting there, but like she was like grinning, and like her head was like convulsing like this, and it was <laughs> terrifying. And there was like in the corner, her phone was like playing some like like alarm sound, but like really faint and really creepy, and I was like, oh, that's not great. I shut the door. And then, and then afterwards, I hear like normal sounds behind it, and I open it again. And it was normal, like it was my mom, like, and I don't know why it was like a makeshift guest room, and it was going towards the basement or something. It was like in the basement already. I don't know. The dream doesn't make sense. It's, right. It should be first floor, but somehow that room is in the basement. And then, and I go in. You know, I hang out. It's like, oh, great, everything's back to normal. I don't know where the fish person went, but she, it just vanished from my dream. You know, and now it's the basement arc, and <laughs> and then we're walking. Yeah, the basement arc. Okay. And it was like a huge basement. And we were like walking around and it was like endless. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And it, behind every door is like a bigger section of the basement. I was like, I don't remember our house being this big. Why is our basement so huge? And there's like miscellaneous fa- furniture uh, furniture because I think like we just got this house or like rented it or something. Mm-hmm. And we're just walking around and then <laughs> out jumps a huge furry spider that like grabs me on the foot <laughs> and so that was that was another layer of terrifying we first got i don't know possessed mom we got the fish and now we got giant bugs that yeah, is now right. terrorizing me oh yeah right of course yeah <laughs> yeah and then and then so it was just a lot of screaming hitting the bug trying to kill the bug and running away and the bug goes so fucking fast 
And you know, after the after the um, and then we got rid of the bugs, and then we were walking around again, and then we opened this door, and it was this like very modern, well furnished like gamer room. Like it had like three monitors, the walls were white, it had like LEDs. It was very well furnished. But the thing is, we were like, whose room is this? We have never seen this before. And there was like a second subsection of the room inside, and we walked in, and another person walked out, and we were like, who are you? Why are you living in our basement? Right. And then, and then, and then the lady was like, "Oh, I'm like a, I'm like a a, a relative of the person that you got the house from." And I was, uh, you know, I was hoping that you never find me. And another weird thing oh. is, like on the yeah, in the corner of her room, there was like stairs going up to like a night night market, which night- also doesn't make sense. Wait, what is a night market? Like, like a, like a, it's like an evening and it's like those uh, Asian night markets with like food and like, like all these little vendors on the side, that kind of stuff, like okay. a night market. Yeah. And which is also weird. Why is our basement connected to a night market? Of course. I don't know. God. Convenience. <laughs> yeah. Convenience. Very, very convenient. And yeah. And then, and then another man shows up. I don't know where he came from. And he was like, you know, I'm very surprised you guys, you know, got this place. And I was like, what do you mean? You're very surprised we got this place. And they're like, you don't know, this place is haunted. I was like, what do you mean this place is haunted? Yeah. And then, and then, and they're like, yeah, you know, like there's like hair on the walls and like a lot of like the people in the old family, like the, uh, the oldest son died here. And like the, the daughter had like a, a miscarriage. Things just went really bad in this house. So we thought, you know, no one will get this place. And I was like, mom, why did you get this place? And she was like, you know, it's cheap. And then the dream ended. Oh wait, no, no, no! And then the man tried to kill us, and then I killed him, and then the dream ended. Whoa! So Pro- it it was, it was a lot. It was a lot going that, on. That sounds like a lot. Um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Also, like the dream didn't end when the spider attacked you, but yeah. right. That's what I thought too. And it was like it was one of those dreams where I like I was sure that I was living within it, and it was very vivid. <laughs> so it was absolutely terrifying. Uh, well, that's that's an amazing dream. And yeah, <laughs> I, I love everything about it. Um, it was an emotional roller coaster. It truly was. I didn't was. know what was going to happen next. Yeah, when you thought it would end, it gets worse. Yeah, like the fish with the foot fetish. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fish with the foot feet. fetish. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, just talk to my me. feet. Can can, mm-hmm. can um. <laughs> Can speak? Can you think of like any other like nightmares that you might have had, contestants? Like I don't remember any nightmare. Like they kind uh, of all leave my mind. I I have one nightmare that kind of like stuck with me because it was like recurring. a recurring one. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I would just be like, I would wake up in quotes, right? And I'd be in my bed, and I'd reach over to like pet my cat. Mm-hmm. But this time, instead of my cat, there was a hand. So I like touch the hand. I'm like, that's odd, right? So of course I look over, and uh, I just see like these bright, sharp teeth, like in the darkness. I'm like, oh, like Alice okay, in Wonderland well, type cat thing. Yeah, yeah, like Cheshire, Cheshire cat kind of bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, you know be done with this right and so i woke up again right Mm -hmm. and this time i reached over and the cat was there and i pet the cat i'm like oh okay cool i'm I'm back we're we're good a little sleepy but whatever and then like i hear behind me you can't escape that easily and i was like oh fuck me And that one actually woke me up. And I had that one like five times in a row. And I'm like, you just don't, Brain? Yeah. It's kind of horrifying. Is it when your subconscious dream, like... telling you that your cat is evil and to be careful? It might have been a warning from your subconscious mind. <laughs> She's old and she can't do anything. She's fine. <laughs> right. Nice. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I think that's about it. Uh, Tenny, did you have anything else besides that nightmare that happened during your week? Uh, this week? I kind of didn't really do much, honestly. Late around. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I nice enjoyed your dream. Um, Thank you. Uh, contestants, uh, how was your Yo. week? Yo. Well, uh, my week was actually pretty great. 
Really? So, yeah, my cat Thunder's been having some issues lately. She's 19. Right. And oh, wow. she was lady. losing a lot of weight. And before she was diagnosed with a uh, hyperthyroid, right? Right. And so that can cause like weight loss, uh, diluted urine, blood in the urine, a bunch of like different nasty things. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I finally was able to take her to the vet, paid a bunch of money to have some blood work done, your analysis done, et cetera. And I found out that her um, hyperthyroid had like advanced or she'd become like resistant to the medication. Yep. So it basically had like a resurgence and that was what was giving her hell for the past like week and a half or so. And so uh, we've doubled her medication and her symptoms have been lessening over That's time kind of... and things are looking much better seems like my cat's not gonna die yet yay that's great always good very great news always good mm-hmm. that's actually oh I'm, I'm happy. i don't know if anyone knows anything but her normal cat thyroid levels are like three to four mm-hmm. and thunder was at uh 13 oh damn so her thyroid is just working freaking overtime <laughs> grinding zones getting over leveled it was awful that sucks i'm sorry yeah oh she's but, feeling okay now she's, she's feeling much better like she jumped over to uh this area right here and then jumped into my clothes bin because she wants to screw up all my clothes so she's feeling way better she that can activity. be a menace it's good it's good that's stuff good. that's awesome um i was actually yeah. worried you know i i'm not gonna lie every once in a while i worry about your cat I yeah. know, me too. <laughs> Being cat people. Um, I'm sure she'll make an appearance today at some point. Probably. As she usually does. She she also, like... She was just chilling in the tub earlier and then jumped in my lap. And so she got my pants all wet. And I'm like, great, awesome, thanks. <laughs> uh, Tanny, when, when his cat uh, visits uh, the stream or, or whatever it may be, she usually makes her presence known. Before she, uh, she's like, I'm here. Very, very loud. She's deaf now, unfortunately. Oh, that sucks. Old age took her hearing. She's so uh, her meows got even louder when they were already <laughs> very loud. Yeah. Um, I'm glad she's she, still alive she's still and doing well. And, you know, mm-hmm. kicking the soul. It's good. We're good. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Did you have anything else? Finally, some good news for my week, you know? That's that actually uh, I am really happy for you. I started playing Path of Exile again. Mm-hmm. It's been fun. Uh Twitch has been giving me hell. I just can't stream right now for some reason. It's like routing me through Taiwan for the server and it's like, yeah, your bit rate's like 1,500 when you're trying to stream at a bit rate of 5,000. I'm like, yeah, no, that would happen if I'm going through Taiwan. Yeah. Twitch. When I'm in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Oh, I didn't boy. know that they route you to a different country. That's so weird. I mean, they're not supposed to. <laughs> There's a Twitch server literally like two hours from me, but it's fine. It's fine. Everything's great for now, I guess. Question. Do you have Spectrum internet by chance? No. Okay. No. I, I have uh, CenturyLink. I have, yeah, I don't even think we have that here. Uh, we got we got it uh, like a year ago. We used to be like a Comcast monopoly, and it was terrible because Comcast is terrible. Yep. But now I pay like half the price for triple the speed internet. So, damn, That's it's good. good. It's good. No outages either. Yeah, I'm gonna have some old man bitching to do about internet today too. Whenever I get to my week, so. you gotta bitch to your ISP. Be like Spectrum, you motherfuckers. Fix my shit. Yeah, I I think I um, want to stream to the youth. The youth. Uh, so, uh, so got the cat, got the, got the cat. The, the, Path the, of Exile. Uh, five and st- uh, nothing else really. Uh, yeah, nothing else. Been but, good though, you know. Like it's, go- it's all good stuff. For yeah, man. Once in my life. That's very, good. Very dreary. Yeah. 
even the stock stock uh, even the stock market stopped going down. I think we all have bottomed out. I think for good. I'm, so, I've only lost like two thousand dollars. We're fine. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um. So okay. So wait. Let me, so when you when the stock market crashes, do you hold that yeah. same amount? Yeah. You know, like you say, you lost two thousand dollars. Do you still hold well, the amount that you invested, or does it just does that amount diminish over time? Okay, so say for example, you buy a stock mm -hmm. at a hundred dollars. You buy one of that stock, right? You have one share of that stock, right? It goes down to eighty dollars. You have a net loss of twenty dollars if you sell. Right. And this, that's where, this is that's why where if you never sell, you never in. lose. <laughs> exactly. That's where I'm at. If I don't sell, I don't actually lose two thousand dollars. Exactly. But realistically, stocks don't always go back up, and sometimes it's better mm -hmm. to sell before you lose even more. So yeah. So your hundred dollars basically turns into effectively eighty dollars in that scenario, which well, is bad. Will it last at eighty dollars for a long time? Who knows? Stock market's a fucking casino right now. Stonks. Yeah. yeah. Are you, and are you sure like it bottoms out? Years. I mean, I it's heard... not going down anymore yet. I don't. I don't know too much about this, but I just remember hearing something about Elon Musk saying that it's going to get worse or something like that. <laughs> Nobody knows. No one freaking yeah. knows. <laughs> Uh, People with like 20 years experience like in the stock market or like 50 years experience in the stock market are like, wow, we all these like things I've learned, they mean nothing. It's just a fucking casino. You're just all in on red. Sometimes <laughs> you win, sometimes you lose. Mm -hmm. That was like, uh, what was it when the whole GameStop market thing happened? And then exactly. Like, then yeah. people found out for like 100% that the stock market is rigged um and and because yeah. of, because you know how they they essentially were like oh we're you know we can't this this trading we got to stop it so they like stopped people yeah. from making money uh especially they, you know, they paused like, trading like five times yeah however when gamestop plummeted from four hundred dollars down to like two hundred and thirty dollars they didn't stop it once. Usually they have like stops when there's extreme plunges, but they were like, nah, it's fine. Just let it go. Fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. Fuck Thinking them they can make it in this world. Uh, so was that was there anything else that happened during your week, my guy? No. No, no, nothing. No. Okay. Um, All good things. Yes. All right. So I guess I'll start with my week then. Yeah. Um, go for it. So let me think. What happened this week? It's so weird when I have to do this, and then I'm just trying to think about everything that happened. And I know there's something interesting in there, but Maybe I just you should write like a list in the future. I usually <laughs> do. I'm not gonna lie. Like the night really? before. Yeah. You sure? Because you kind of like stumble through a lot of these. A lot of ahs and ums. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about my week. And uh, what did I do? I basically... The things that are popping up into my mind is I beat Mega Man Zero. Nice. And, uh, that game is okay. It's not bad. Um, it's not awful. It's really it's what so, I came, came down it's to. It's pretty, pretty mid. I don't know if it's mid, but I just prefer the old Mega Man formula better. Of like, you know, you beat a boss, you know, you earn an ability, which I think they... Now I've got your power! Now I've got your power. Um, which, in this game, they only have four abilities. And so, one of the abilities is actually not to have an ability at all. Uh, because some abilities will actually do, like, zero damage to, a, like, an opponent. Um, making it a little, you know, it, it was a little frustrating, and you know, like I usually usually like to figure out the formula of what a boss is weak to, 
Uh, but it also gives you weapon variety, so you don't necessarily just have, like, a blaster or, you know what I mean? It gives you, like, a, yeah. like you have a staff and you have a, a shield that you throw. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. And there's, like, a fourth item in there uh, that I probably never use. Um, but, you know, you just have your regular sword. And you do have sword. a gun. And you can actually use both weapons in different slots. So what I found out is that the game actually has a combo system uh, that you can figure out. And so, like, say, there are, like, glitches, like there's a shield glitch where you can literally just keep attacking and the opponent has no iframes. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Uh, there's That's some speedrunner shit. There was there was a lot of... I was looking up... <laughs> so I finally learned, for whatever reason, as I've gotten older... The, the more interesting stuff about a game is the speedrunning stuff for me. Yeah, for sure. Because it, it's like just the base game. It's just like, well, I guess I'm going to charge my sword and then I'm going to hit him and then I'm going to run around and then I'm going to charge my sword. and then I, You know what I mean? And then it kind of... But the yeah. more depth of whatever the game has to offer is usually what <clears throat> I find myself gravitating towards. Um, and I think it's like that fighting game side of me that kind of, like, wants to, you know, that looks into that kind of stuff. Uh, that, and whenever I struggle with a boss, I'm like, well, there's got to be an easy way to do this. You know, because, and I only say that because, well, speedrunners exist, and you know that they have, like, an optimized way of, like, beating a They're boss. They're beating this game in, like, 20 minutes! How the game. hell do they do it? I, I think I saw, like, somebody beat it an hour, and I, like, I, I beat it in, like, four hours. So it's like, well, so they got to be doing something right, you know? Um, yeah. And there are all there are people that make tons of tutorials on how to play, um, you know, game speedrunning style, which is it's pretty cool. Like, I'm not going to, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to go through it and, uh, you know, be like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to be a speedrunner now. No, I'm just trying to look for, like, the best way to play the game and have fun. Um, yeah. And that, that's that's really it. Uh, I can. I started playing Mega Man Zero, two, and like right off the bat, the game has quality of life improvements. It, it's like a better game, and I and you know I always you love to see it when you know a game is like gradually improving through every iteration. You know, it's not it's not the same game it was last time. It's like oh no, we have all this new stuff, and it's like oh that's sick. It's like a. Uh, I think we were talking about Dragon Ball Z Budokai last... Maybe it might have been last week or two weeks ago. It's hard to remember. But either way, I was, like, re-listening to the podcast and we were talking about it. And it was just like, oh, Budokai 2 is, like, better than Budokai 1. And then you were saying, like, yeah, Budokai 3 is better than, you know... And so far, it just kind yeah. of keeps, you know, getting better with each each version. Um, and it's pretty great. rare. Yeah, it is. It, it is Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, does Resident Evil 8, is it really better than 7? It's like, they're kind of the same game. It's got some cool stuff that's not in the other game, but, like, tech-wise, like, ability-wise, does it really give you that much? And the answer is, like, not really. It feels the same. It feels the same, yeah. It feels the same. Uh, but, I mean, I feel like with that formula, it's, it's not so much necessarily about the tech you have. I mean, at least, you know, from what I know. I'm not a speedrunner. It it's you know it's about the story and experiencing like getting spooked. Uh, so it's kind of like a different experience altogether. Uh, I also have had internet problems this week. Uh, I found myself streaming on Friday. I actually started Budokai Three because I've been playing through the the Budokai series. So I beat one, beat two, moved on to three. Uh, and then I think about two hours roughly into the stream, it started to die. Uh, my, my bit rate went from like 5,000 to like a hundred. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. I was watching when that was happening. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, just turned it to a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, oh, no. pretty much. Yeah. It, it was really frustrating. Uh, and I was just sitting there trying to look through and I, I started doing speed tests and it was not good. And then I had my roommate also do a speed test because he was on the computer. And he literally was getting the same results. Um, so I looked it up. 
and it finds out that you kind of have to call your internet company provider, oh. uh, and you have to have them come and figure out why your your shit's all fucked up. Considering we're, we're paying for this to to work, and you know, yep. um, and literally the same thing happened on Saturday. Um, but I, I did like know I've had a sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna. I was going to say, I feel like I was, I've had a similar problem before. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to switch internet providers because, I don't know why, it randomly started to, like, die every time I stream. Like, it, it would be okay before, but every time I start streaming and I stream for, like, around 30 minutes, it just dies, like, it completely for everyone. Yeah. So, they, it, it might be a similar problem. They were probably throttling your upload. Yeah, probably. But yeah, oh. so we had to, like, switch internet providers because it just kept, kept getting worse to the point that it, like, it would just stop even if I'm not streaming. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th- Some th- providers can be really stingy and will throttle you. Mm-hmm. Throttle upload? Like, I'm not sure what... Yeah, yeah, they'll throttle your upload or your download, or both. Because mm-hmm. some some have, like, upload limits, mm-hmm. download limits. And what may have happened is you might have hit some kind of upload limit. And so they're throttling your upload. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that that makes sense. I mean, to be fair... I was streaming to do two different platforms. Yeah. So, I mean, I was streaming from my phone and I was streaming from the computer. Mind you, I have yeah. the second, like, best internet that, uh, that you can have without being a business. The second best? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not a business. Time, I, to, I, I, time I, to upgrade to the best. Yeah, Backlog exactly. Incorporated. What is it, like, uh... uh What's the the best form of internet? It's like having a, a like a line service or something. Oh, uh, I can't remember. Be anything. Fiber fiber optic like internet. Fiber optic. Yeah. The little little mm-hmm. glass space in the tube. Yeah, fiber optic. I've never even seen that. That sounds so rich. I've never even seen it. Um. But uh. But yeah. Um. But really frustrating. I, I think I'm going to try to obviously not stream to two platforms because I think that's what's really getting me. Um, it could be, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, also the thing that I think, too, is like we have a bunch of new people that moved in. So they could be like saying like, hey, you're using too much Internet bandwidth for the rest of the, the neighborhood, considering, you know, your Internet is shared amongst a bunch of other people. Uh, that's possible, but usually they have, like, gates in place for each individual connection. Yeah. Um, and then I also noticed that the, the the servers they were connecting me to was, like, one was in Montreal. The other was ah, in, like, yeah, New York slash Chicago. So, I, I mean, I live in Maine, which is kind of, like, in the middle. But, like, that's, we're talking, like, five hours away uh, for a server. So, I don't know. It was a uh, that shouldn't that shouldn't be that much. That shouldn't be that bad. That, again, like I don't. I don't in theory, really know, in but, theory, yeah. it in, shouldn't be that bad. Yeah, make make sure you push your your glasses up to your face when you say that. In theory, yeah, in theory, it shouldn't <laughs> be that bad. <laughs> there you go. Um, and then I think. Oh, that's right. We did. I did a charity stream on Saturday. That was kind of like impromptu. Uh, it was for a content creator named Galvaris, um, who plays Mega Man games, and uh, I guess recently his wife had passed away. So, oh, um, yeah. Oh, so that I, sucks. I wound up doing a Mega Man Zero stream uh, through the Mega Man collection, and uh, it was really fun. Yeah, a lot of people, new people came through. I got to meet some some cool uh, people, um, and I'll I'm actually gonna link the the charity in the in the description so that if anybody wants to donate they can feel free um and uh yeah it was a good time um and then yeah i think that was pretty much it oh and also i could say on a side note that the only reason i know that the Mega Man collection my issues with it was like you know i think i i briefly went over it it was like uh, it felt very tedious when you die and you lose all your credits. You're constantly in a game over loop. Uh, I found out that you can grind credits. Finds out, but it takes an extremely long time. Like 
more than I think anyone would ever want to spend grinding a one-up. Like, it, it literally took me, like, two hours of, like, being in a room. And I got two credits. You know, that's a credit an hour, man. Um, just get good, dude. Just get that's good. That's all you need to do. Yeah, yeah, you just need to get good. Yeah. Just beat the game without dying. Now, imagine if that's you... That's the secret. If you die, if you, you know, you lose all your credits and you die because you don't know the boss matchup. And you have to start all the way at the beginning because you lost all your credits. You would not want to finish... you gotta learn game. faster. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Even though, like, in that game, if you don't know how to beat a boss, you'll die, and, like, almost instantly. Uh, so it's very unforgiving. Yeah. So in the Mega Man Zero collection, it fixes all of my issues where it gives you checkpoints, because in the original, there are no checkpoints. So, it, and I found the game, like, 100% more enjoyable. You know? Because once you die, it just starts you out, like, right outside the room. You're good. You can just start again. Baby mode. Baby, Baby mode. mode. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's really think about it. It's more like speedrunner mode because speedrunners will like they'll pause on a certain situation that they don't know and they'll keep going over it over and over and over again until they kind of learn the situation. Which is like to me, it's like because I had beaten it the first time playing it a second time was more fun because I knew what to do. And you know what I mean? There were a few... Yeah. The other thing, too, about the game, at least the first game, is that, like, let's say you go on a mission, and you're like, hey, we need this blah, 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 this train. So you go on the train. If you die, you no longer get to redo that mission. So you're, like, missing sections of the story as you're going through it. So, look, you might as well just start over if you if you lose the entire game. All right. Time to start over. Again really frustrating kind of stuff where it's like why is this so unforgiving why i can't you know uh, i want to just experience the game as a whole anywho uh that was pretty that's much... how they padded the game out it's not that long of a game that it's true it's true i, <laughs> I found myself they padded like, it out with difficulty <laughs> they did yeah um but i'm hoping that Mega Man zero two is still kind of like it, it i think it realized a lot of its problems and it's like kind of going back to it being influenced by like the X series or even, yeah, you know, because it has like the, you know, when you, you're selecting a boss, it breaks up the windows and you're like, you want to fight this boss or this boss. The other game didn't yeah. even do that. It just had a name. It's like, go to this place. And then you go there yeah. and there's a boss that you don't even know anything about. But, but yeah, man, I think that was, uh, that was pretty much my week. Um, uh, it was Solid. a good time. Yeah. Um, other other than Twitch being an asshole. Other than Twitch and my internet. Internet being an asshole. Being a just... complete jerk. Yeah. What you gonna do though? Uh also, I forgot to mention, I will be doing I think oh. we're gonna be doing a review on Steam Deck this week. Is that Oh, nice. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. Um I think I, I've spent about a week with it and I finally got like my terabyte uh mini micro SD in so now I can actually have like modern games like Tekken you, on, you, on you can have a game on it yeah, I can yeah. Have a, that's not emulated um, uh, so yeah I'm, I'm excited to see how that goes um, but yeah anywho I guess we should move on to the questions of the week uh, if sure. you guys are down so let's, go. let's see Hit que me. question one what cartoon or anime do you wish you could live in for a week? Hmm. Um, I'll be honest, I'm pretty stumped about this because I, I I haven't watched anime in a very long time. So I mean, it's, it, it's very much in the past. I can't I can't remember too much of what I really liked. Uh, Back when I watched anime, only a week. <laughs> I mean, that's the question. I mean, what, it could be yeah, any amount. What, 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 what amount of time would you want to live in? What What could I get like accomplished in a week in some yeah. kind of fantasy anime ass world? Look, it doesn't. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. You could go into Looney Tunes for a day and drop a Acme <laughs> Anvil on I don't know Bugs Bunny. You know what I mean? It's... Or hang out with Lola Bunny. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, we 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 pressed the Lola button. All right. Um, now, um, 
See, I, I have a hard time answering this question too, but let's see. If I could pick a thing. See, I don't know. Because I, I feel like. Okay. If... I got mine. All right, go on. I'm actually going to go with the world of Mashoku Tensei. Because even like an average Joe, nobody know nothing. Mm -hmm. can do basically whatever they want. Like, you can learn magic. You can, like, learn sword fighting. You can, like, become a merchant. You can hang out. You can just do whatever you want because it's so, like, freeform. They don't have any, like, destiny kind of stuff going on for, like, powers and shit like that. So I think it would be a fun time. So it's not, like... Visiting example... all, like, the locales and all that. So it's not like you have to be the special to be able to learn something. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, why don't we open it up? Why don't we I feel like I wouldn't be the special. No. Definitely not. I Definitely don't, not. I, no. mean, I, I probably wouldn't be either. <laughs> why don't... I would not be the main character. I'm like the comedic side character. <laughs> the sidekick. I, I fail to make the main character look better. You die <laughs> yeah. in the second episode. <laughs> yeah. I fight this time. I could take him. I end up in the crater. Yeah, that kind of thing. You're the reason why Goku goes Super Saiyan. Gotcha. The All sacrificial right. yeah, yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, why don't we open it up to any fictional... Any fiction whatsoever. So it could be a book or... Like, I don't know. Why don't you... Like, you could just be a side character in Twilight. I don't know. Like, the the, uh, the, the, the uh, world... Uh, the, what, the, would, <laughs> what would you do in the Twilight as a normal-ass right? person? I, I don't Live your normal-ass life? Character. You could yeah, sit you there and, like, person. eat a sandwich and watch vampires play <laughs> yeah. baseball. I don't know. That you wouldn't even fun. see that because they, like, don't, like, do anything in public. Yeah. What if you just, like, were in the woods? Like, you stumbled upon them. <laughs> like, you were hunting. Just eating your lunch. What the <laughs> fuck? Werewolf just runs by? Okay. Why are these kids so pale and glittery? <laughs> Damn, they play good and baseball. And stalkerish. I don't understand it. Yeah, right? Like, But she seems into it? I, I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, this is, this is kind of murky. I'm out of here. I guess she seems into it, but also it's like, man, why is this so creepy, this relationship that they have? Because anyway, it is. It's very creepy. Um, it is. I'm trying to think. Like he's I, so old. She's so young. Like I, I wouldn't want to say like something like and Dragon stalkery. Ball Because let's say I go into no. Dragon Ball, I'm more likely to die. Let's face it. Yeah, yo, like, yeah. I'm just so, some threat invades, town explodes. <laughs> you're done. Yeah, that's it. You came over. I mean, how how often has the world, like not the world, but the people, like a large scale like genocide happened? To the human race. All the time. Every like, fucking time. Every season, it feels like. Every, uh, every, every arc, there's at least one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, uh, I think another or part multiple. that's... Yeah, another part that's hard about the question is, I feel like everything I think of, I'm like, if I go in as a side character, I'm just nothing. I'm just there. <laughs> yeah, that's literally why I chose Michelle Kutensei, yeah. because there's no <laughs> requirements. I can just do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> um, what? You're muted. I'm muted. Oh, no, never mind. I just... guess you're lagging, or it was just cutting out. I don't yeah. know, your mouth was moving and nothing was coming yeah. out. Yeah. I think it's because I turned my mouth away from my microphone. Uh, here, ah. make a little bit of an adjustment. Considering... Sure. As, as you can see, mine is very close. <laughs> well, it's it's got to be, I think it's about, what is it, 12 inches away from your face is the, the audio. Yeah, it's 12, close enough. So what you want to do is you want to make like a like this, and then you want to point it at your microphone, and that's the appropriate distance. Yeah, see, that doesn't really work. I got some, like, long-ass fingers. D d whatever, man. It doesn't, ultimately, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But, you know, as long as it's about that, that like, it's not an exact... Yeah. No. I mean, that's... It's... Uh, yeah, like that. As, as, long, as long as you're that far away, like, and you're not, like... This far away, you know, like you'd probably be fine. I mean, you know, everything's great. Yeah, you still sound fine. Um, but anyway, yeah. So maybe it's a maybe, good microphone. Maybe if we can't answer this question, we should probably just move. Because like, I, oh, I, coming to what comes to mind too is like maybe Pokemon. Yeah, that's that'd be fun. Cool. Yeah, that'd be fun. Ter that, that'd like, be a good like secondary. Yeah, mm -hmm. like 
like you could get your own Pokemon, but also yeah. like a, your world is actually really terrifying. You know, it's true. <laughs> Every day could just be a, a like apocalypse. Mm hmm. Right, and and not only In fact, that, I don't know how anyone's alive. Mag cargos alone burn hotter than the sun. Wow. Yeah. What, wasn't it also there's like a Pokemon that weighs like 12 tons that Ash just held in his hands or something like that? <laughs> uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. I know I know Arons are extremely heavy, like those little little steel dudes that are adorable. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would say Pokemon because, you know, I could catch my own Pokemon and, you know, have my own slave friends. Oh, <laughs> that sounds... Is that the yeah. reason now? No. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, but when you like when you really think about it, it's like Born into the wrong time, huh, backlog? Oh it's God. like when, when you really think about it, it's like why like is it really ethical to own Pokemon? I don't think so. I don't know. Man. I mean Pikachu seems happy. Usually. <laughs> Remember that episode where like he thought about evolving Pikachu and like yeah. It was a very dramatic episode. It's like, well, I use the yeah. thunder sound and be, become Raichu. We lost that fight. What are we going to do? In, instead, he'd hooked Pikachu up to a freaking, like, uh, bike, like, power plant thing and just supercharged him. It's Fuck like it, it. Whatever. We get shit done. Yeah, we got to trade, man. Uh, all right. So let's move on to the next question. I think me and Tenny had talked about this a little bit. But what would chairs look like if your knees bent in the other direction? No, I have, I have a lot of questions about the premise of this one. The, is it only the me knees that bend backwards or does the thigh joints also bend backwards? Because I can't imagine it being too different if it's just the knees. Oh, see, see, this is, this, I, I mean, I so, guess it would have to be, right? What? Knees, yeah. knees bending backwards means literally, like, instead of knee go down like this, knee go up like this? Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, yeah. Because that would be backwards. Yeah. Like, what if you could just and... rotate your knees, like, to, like, where your knees are where your butt is? You know what I mean? And I was thinking. Okay, yeah, was so then thinking... there would just be a hole in the back of my chair, and my legs <laughs> would just kind of drape down over the side. And my back would still be against the chair. Yeah, I was it thinking. It wouldn't be incredibly you... comfortable, but yeah, if your it would joint, work. If your thigh joint doesn't also rotate the other way, I don't think it's very possible to sit because if your knees bend the other way, then your like then the back of your thigh doesn't really touch the chair because it has to go the other way. Then the front of your thigh has to touch the chair. Does, does this also, if my knees joint? were up, my feet would just be in the freaking camera right now. Like the only the only way where your the back of your thigh is going to touch a chair with your normal hip rotation would be if your leg is shooting up in the sky, <laughs> kind of. Also, does or that, like if you have your legs open or does, sitting in like the. Uh... Does that mean that like our we would have to sit like this, you know, with the chair? like sort of in front of you, you know, i mean like... you could technically mm -hmm. no no because if you did that then your legs would be pushing into the chair i think i think uh, i sent uh i sent the backlog reference pictures of xavier renegade angels because he could sit in normal chairs and he has his knee backwards <laughs> didn't it i don't know if you guys know xavier renegade angels i honestly i saw that show like maybe a handful of times and mm -hmm. it, I never, like, I saw it, and it was always so goofy that, like, I never it's understood so what was going on. I love Xavier Renegade Angels. Adult Swim, Adult Swim TV shows when they were at their weirdest, <laughs> probably. When they're, mm -hmm. they're, they just greenlit anything that was yeah. extremely strange. <laughs> Squidbillies. Squidbillies, yeah. Or um, mm -hmm. what was it? Uh, uh, Twelve Inch Mouse or. Whatever moral Oral. Moral Oral was a great show. Was it? Because every time I watched yes. it, I hated it. No, it's so good. It's so good. It's so dark. I don't get it's it. It's so fucked up. I don't think I get it. Um it's a shame. But yeah, I think I think probably like it'd be more like what you said. But yeah, Xavier Renegade Angel, like I think when I look at that, I'm like, I'm always thinking to myself, like, the creators are probably like, hey, 
let's make the most awkward looking thing while he's sitting <laughs> in a chair and just not explain it. I think they were just blazed out of their mind. They're like, dude, I got like this is a great idea. Okay, and in this how chair. They just sit in the chair. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, yeah. So I guess the, uh, I guess the next question is this is a this is a classic question. I feel like uh, uh, this was popular for a little while. You yeah. get ten million dollars, but for the rest of your right. life, there is a super snail that is invincible and kills you by touching you. It follows you, trying to kill you, and it can board planes, like, at all times. Like, what would you do? Planes. Yeah, like, so, so it can always, it Oddly always... Oddly specific. <laughs> so it's, like, a following you for eternity. Does like, it have to buy a ticket to get on the plane also? I don't understand the Because it's going to have to work okay? a 9 to 5 to, like, get on that plane. And that, I feel like that gives me ample time. To get away. Mm -hmm. That's true. And if I'm honest, I just wouldn't take that $10 million. It doesn't seem worth it. But a snail moves so In slow. In this economy? Yeah, but you have to think about it. You have to be constantly spending your $10 million to get away. You can't even enjoy your $10 million. I'd rather what? just lay in bed without $10 million. What, what constitutes a super snail? Uh, I'm assuming that it means that he's not going to die if you, like, step on him. Or, like... He, okay, so I just put him under a jar and just call it a day? Uh, <laughs> maybe. I mean, like, again, I mean, like, <laughs> like, imagine. Just, you, just like, grab a cup and just go, all right, cool, $10 million. You may not see <laughs> him Nobody moved this cup. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I, I imagined him to be invisible, because I, like, I was thinking super snails. Like, does it have, like, all the superpowers in the world? Can it, can it like, be like, invisible? Can, it can I not detect him? Can it fly? Can it shoot laser a laser eyes? through my heart? <laughs> I think the idea is that no matter what happens, he's coming after you. He's okay. never going to stop. He's like the Terminator. Okay. Right? He, he's kind of like the... It's kind of like uh, the apparition from It Follows. I don't know if I've ever seen that movie. Oh, uh, it's basically about like a sexually transmitted curse. Yes, I have heard of that movie. <laughs> and like an apparition follows you everywhere and tries to kill you. That's right. But yeah. it's slow and invisible to other people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think but, it, but it can interact with other people. Uh, it was it was a pretty good movie, actually. I liked it. I remember what happened. I know what happens at the end. But yeah, it also gets smarter. It gets smarter. Like it, it learns how to smarter. open doors. Like no, no, it it already knows how to like open doors and stuff. But like for example, so at one point in the movie, the main character escapes out a window, mm -hmm. right? And that's how they get away from it. Uh, the next time when they're in a similar scenario, they go to try to get out the window, but it's waiting there at the window. Oh. Okay. So it like learns how you like escape and how you maneuver. So it was like slowly getting smarter and smarter and smarter, like right. with regards to catching you, even though it's slow. Mm. I see. Yeah. Well, that sounds pretty dope. So yeah. the real question is, would you take that $10 million? I would not. <laughs> I mean, without more knowing more, it's a maybe because snails Look, this is all you know. know about the snail. I feel you're, like you're never going to know hard when for a up. snail to board a plane. You know what? What if like ten years Customs from now, is a bitch. You're living in your ha in your house, your your mansion, and you're sleeping. Yeah. Then all yeah. of a sudden, and then you're a, dead. A snail just comes into your room, like climbs underneath the the I don't know the door. Yeah. Okay. And he comes. And I'm for dead. You. Yeah. And you're you're yeah. cool with that? I don't even know because I'm dead. I, I was assuming... I went to sleep and then I didn't wake up. <laughs> I was assuming that the moment you get the ten million dollars, he already starts his hunt. He's like constantly on your trail. So I don't think I would want that trouble because <laughs> I'd imagine that I'd be constantly on the run. That's true. That mm -hmm. that's that very true. Um, just like carving through like the jungles and shit. There's like a little <laughs> snail behind me with like a little machete carving path. Also, like what what's going on? Mind you, understand. every every time you see a snail, it could be that same snail. I feel like it would look distinct from other snails. 
photo because and also I'd probably develop snails. like a snail stomping syndrome. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I, I feel like I would just start stomping on snails. Yeah, but you could die if you stomped on that snail. Yeah, what if it's a, it's poisonous? But, but it wouldn't it touch me. Spike. It would be touching my foot. I no, 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 my no. shoe touch, touches, it's a super touches snail. you. Period. Touches you. Period. Yep. Oh. Well, I guess I'm crushing it with something else <laughs> nearby, like a rock. I don't know. They have you quintessence. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Why are you being that guy? Um, it's just how I be. So what you're saying is you take the ten million. Probably, yeah. Yeah. It would it would add some excitement to my life. I mean, hey, you get to live in a nice mansion before you die, and you know you get to drive in a Lamborghini. Maybe if you really want one of those, I wouldn't. But not really. No. Nah. I feel like I would still live like very humble, even if I had a bunch of money. You're gonna die any day. Yeah, you're gonna die yeah, in like two days. Why would you be humble with it in your bank account? Just why am I gonna account? die in two like... days? I can get away from a snail. I could like briskly walk away from said snail. <laughs> but it's a super snail. What if it has super speed? It doesn't well, say anything about super speed. But well, either way, about super super speed. Speed. Let, let's say the snail True. is in your house. Okay. How hey, long is that snail going to be in your house? You no longer have a home. Like, <laughs> like you. you oh, I have ten million dollars. I could just get another home. Damn, dude. I wish yeah. I had your optimism in life. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have something. I mean, like, I would be living it up at all points because I'm like, hey, I'm going to die at some point. Right? Yeah, me too. Like, I got this mm -hmm. $10 million. There's no way I'm going to be able to spend it all. I'm just sitting here gaming. I feel something on my leg. Shit. And I just dropped dead. <laughs> His controller disconnected. Um, right. Permanently. All right. So essentially, I think we would all take the $10 million free. Um. So I guess with that, what? we Teddy Teddy said she wouldn't. I would. Oh, that's right. I would not. That's right. I'd that. rather yeah. just live normal and peaceful. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so I guess we can move on to the interview section. If you guys are cool with that. Um, mm -hmm. okay. So I guess the first question, Tenny. Mm -hmm. The people want to know, who is <laughs> Tenny, and how did you get your start in streaming? So, um, uh, it's it's it's. I actually started streaming very randomly. My friend, uh, it was like, it was like when COVID just started, right? And it was during the summer, mm -hmm. so nobody had anything to do, right? And my friend started streaming Minecraft, <laughs> and uh, and and the funny thing is, I never watched Twitch beforehand. Like, I I, I was never a really stream watching person. I never really watched Twitch, mm -hmm. or um, knew any Twitch streamers or anything like that. So my friend started streaming on Twitch, and that's like essentially my first interaction with Twitch. I started like modding for her, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then afterwards, uh, her and some other friends were like, you should stream too. And I was like, you know what? I have nothing to do, so I'm going to stream too. <laughs> and that's essentially uh, when I started streaming, which is pretty funny because I didn't even watch Twitch. And then suddenly I'm now streaming on Twitch, which is a funny little jump, I think. Right. It's quite the jump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, like, with that, like, what was it like when you first started? And how did, it, how did you kind of, like, really get gravitated towards towards streaming? Like, this is, like, you started, right? But you're like, how is it, hmm. like, this is what I want to do. Uh, well, hmm. When I first started, I, like, it was, it was like, a hobby thing. And because I didn't really have anything to do. And I'm a, I kind of just set a schedule and I just started streaming um, according to my schedule. Because um, I had my friend as, like, a, a guide, right? Like, I didn't know much about streaming. So I just essentially asked my friend who started streaming to, like, for questions. And I pretty much just did what she did. And she had a very frequent schedule. And I was always, you know, pretty committed to it. So I was like, you know what? You know, if I'm going to start streaming, like, I might as well just commit to it, right? And so I set up, like, a like a four-day-a-week schedule. And I committed to a stream, like, four hours a day uh, mm -hmm. per stream and, like, around four days a week, four to five days a week. And then just stuck with it. And, you know, once it got habitual, it was just easier to just, you know, every time that time hits, I start streaming. And it was just... It just became very normal, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and oh, I suppose... I, I sp go on. Sorry, I I couldn't hear you for a bit. I think it was not catching your voice again. Right. Okay. My bad. No worries. I'm gonna turn off my fan. Um. Okay. 
So what, and with that, when did you start, like, when did you decide to become like a VTuber? Did you start out as one? Uh, yeah, I did start out with one. And my reasoning to be a VTuber is also kind of funny because um, uh, I was too lazy. Like it was the summer and I didn't want to, and if I was going to do face cam, I had to make sure that I look presentable every day, every time I stream. And I streamed very frequently, right? And I really didn't feel like, you know, like doing my hair, my makeup, like every two days just to stream for like four hours. And I was, yeah, <laughs> I was too lazy for that. So I, I, I saw like VTubers and stuff and I was like, you know what? I could just be a VTuber. No one, no one would know if I... Sometimes you just want to be a it. hobo, you know? Exactly. <laughs> no one would know. I could be a hobo. I could be eating with my foot. You don't, you don't even know that. Like, <laughs> I could be you eating with my know, foot right, right now. Some exactly. people might be into that. A lot of, like, a huge <laughs> foot theme going on with you, Tanny. <laughs> but yeah, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know. So um, that's, that's essentially why I became a VTuber. And, you know, it was only afterwards that I found out that there was this whole, like, VTuber culture and, like, all these, like, specific things that only VTubers do. I had no idea before because, as I said, I never watched uh, Twitch or, like, VTubers. So I had no idea uh, about all the, like the stuff that a lot of YouTubers do, like before they start streaming or when they stream, it's just a, a lot of YouTuber specific things that they do. I didn't mm. realize until like maybe half a year after because <laughs> yeah, I just, I just VTuber just so I don't have to show my face. And I was like, you know, it's, it's like, I, I can keep, I can not show my face and still have like a, a unique character to present and be like, you know, identifiable. So, so and show a little like emotion and connectivity to the audience. So it sounds like it's it's more freeing to mm-hmm. to not have to show your face on a regular basis. I I know for Until me, I learn I become a VTuber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know for me personally, like I hate having to set up my green screen a lot of times mm-hmm. uh, to the point where sometimes I just don't have my camera on. I'm like, I don't want to yeah. turn on my camera today. Uh, the chair stream, the yes. chair stream. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot of work. And, and, you know, it's like, it's like, maybe it's a hot day and I don't want to have my lights on in here, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so sometimes, you know, I understand mm-hmm. the, the struggle can be real. Um, yeah. Hold on one second. And I got another thing. Go on. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And another thing is I, cause I, I was, uh, I watched a few other, um, like, uh, real life face streamers. And another thing that I find really freeing about, um, being a VTuber is that like, they've talked about how like they have to be conscious of what their face is doing because you know they're presenting like themselves while um streaming so they have to be oh, oh. someone just joined uh, it's, it's it's uh it's actually <laughs> august surprise <laughs> I, I need some like wwe theme music uh no uh keep going baby. sorry let me interrupt you i guess i oh, guess sorry. august has joined right. joined the the fight um Oh, he's, he's one of our he's one of our co-hosts, by the way. Just sorry if uh, he uh, startled us, but uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Tenny. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh yeah. So, um, but yeah. So they they've talked about how um, they have to be conscious of what their face it, face is doing uh, almost all the time because they can't make fu- like stupid funny faces <laughs> while they're playing games. Like that just comes naturally. So they have to be uh, constantly have like a section of awareness. <laughs> that they that they have to reserve to like be conscious of what they're doing essentially and i find that like i heard that and i think that's kind of exhausting (laughs) i just look like a dingus all the time (laughs) yeah like and i don't know it's like um you know it's like there's like a form of like anonymity that makes you more more comfortable with like speaking your mind and just being more comfortable during your stream it's like the uh you know the psychology experiment of um there's like multiple experiments where um if they if they ask the uh, the person that the, like the people participating in the experiment to make a choice or something, and they put a mirror in front of them, and they have to see their own face, they make a more like a morally or like society like societally acceptable decisions because they are forced to look at themselves and be aware of their presence in the society and the choices that like the impact that they make. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of yeah. So I think it's just I just feel more comfortable and free if I if like I'm kind of behind a character. See, I, I never actually Avail. thought of it. I never thought of it that way. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes I just like, I I just have you know a resting bitch face, and I'm just playing, <laughs> and I'm like, why don't people like me? <laughs> but then maybe you know maybe it is like the way people read your expression and look at you. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, you know, uh, I didn't think I could. I know feel I go more like slack jawed yeah. sometimes when I'm playing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
this full zombie mode and you deep know, focus. You know, I kind of think maybe like the best for for people that do stream and show their face. Maybe the best angle and option is to just not care and just do you. Mm-hmm. Like if you choose yeah, to be a VTuber yeah. and you want to do that, I think that's that's optimal. And obviously, I think it's worked out really well for you, um, mm-hmm. especially with the the facial expression, you know, angle. Um, Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, yo, August, if if you're gonna be, you want to be, if you're gonna be a part of the interview, do you mind showing your your face or uh, turning on your cam? Yep, I can do that. Uh, I'll. S- Is he talking? Yeah. If he, also, if you if you can, you, could you uh, could you? I don't know if your microphones, uh, if you have a better microphone or what. Using my headset is that okay? It's the one I usually use. Is it? it not you're, working yet? You're, no, it's not that it's not working. It's just that you're kind of quiet. You're okay. very quiet. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to fix that. Uh, give me a second. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt things. I wasn't sure if you guys had started yet. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can't stream it this time. Uh, because oh. internet problems. Oh, got it. Got it. So we decided but, uh, to go with a little pre-recorded. Cool. Very cool. Well, uh, Pee Wee, I had actually a question for a VTuber that I always wanted to ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like. Uh, as a VTuber, do you feel like, you know, being kind of also a person and also using a virtual avatar gives you more permission to be a character that's, like, different from your personality? Or do you try to, like, emulate your personality? Or is it kind of, like, a combination of both? Hmm, I think with VTubers, like, um, it's, it's like, a very personal choice. Some people, some people like to lean in more to, like, a character or try to play a specific kind of uh, character type. But I personally, I, I think I'm just more so myself, but more like amplified for the entertainment of the audience. For example, I'll be more lively, for example, or yeah, just more excited, more lively to, to keep the mood for high in the, uh, <laughs> for the streams. And, but otherwise, I think it's, it's pretty much the same for me. But there are, there are people who would choose to uh, play into a character because like a lot of YouTubers, they have lores. So there'll be like a kind of a fictional character and they'll sometimes play into it or they'll say things that kind of fit into the lore or you know invite people into their streams with a, kind of a lore like for example oh you're like a test subject in my or like you're like a disciple or, or a worker in my like um spaceship or something like that they'll they'll kind of incorporate the lore and have like a char- kind of a story going on in their stream with like a character but i personally just um i'm just a person <laughs> i don't really have that kind of lore set up yeah it's just it's just more um amplified uh personality yeah i mean i actually never really thought of it that way but i have heard from you know the people that do watch vtubers like they always have some kind of memorable sort of i don't want to say cliche Mm -hmm. but like something that you know defines them and you know separates them probably from other people which i mean i guess makes sense i mean i don't think i don't know if you necessarily have any of those sort of you know that lore aspect but Mm-hmm. Um, I I'm thinking about um, maybe making one because like because I don't really have one so there's like kind of inside jokes that we've uh, <laughs> we've kind of made into my like make like temporary lore that's not really officially written by me but it's kind of like an inside joke within my community that we would sometimes pull out sometimes and it's it's pretty funny so I think I think maybe I'll I'll make that official someday in the future. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess my my next question would be uh, what is your favorite part of streaming and this is a double question and why do you mm-hmm. think people keep coming back to your stream hmm, let me think well i think my favorite part of streaming is definitely the community that it creates like constantly seeing the same people come and say hi and like talk about each other's day it's it's i think it's very nice it feels it feels like I'm making friends and that, you know, and the fact that, you know, my viewers, they know each other and they talk to each other. It's just a, it's just very nice and wholesome to see. And they also talk about video games with each other and like discord and they hang out with each other to play games and stuff. And I think that's great. Like, I really like, you know, creating a, a nice space for everyone to connect and be friends with each other and, you know, meet people that they might've not been able to meet otherwise. So I really, I really liked uh, the fact that I could create like this really good space for everyone to feel comfortable and make friends with each other and i think that's that's my favorite part of streaming and i think maybe that's uh, also one of the reasons why they keep coming back like they feel comfortable in the space and they yeah. have people that they know and you know it's just a, a very good time for everyone mm-hmm. yeah i mean i know that it was your community and i think we were playing guilty gear where i think i, I just yeah. happened to play you on stream 
I don't remember if mm-hmm. it was during the beta or if it was, uh, you know, the Steam release. But oh yeah, it's uh, a Steam release. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I start I started playing you on stream, and then one of your one of your someone from your community came and we played matches and then you're like oh yeah i'll connect you to tenny and then you know that's how i met you guys uh again mm-hmm. like a super friendly community over there and a really Thank you know you. nice group of people and every time i come mm-hmm. in there everyone's like hey how you doing backlog and it's like oh how's it going you know and it's pretty cool man so you know if you guys have it yeah. you know, check out tenny's stream uh it's a Thank you. really uh, nice group of people um so let's see so um, what do you think are some of the shortcomings of being a female VTuber? Uh, from your experience, mm. do you think, uh, being a, a female or a VTuber makes people categorize you or assume that you have it easier? Hmm. So I, um, I personally think I would like, I, per- I personally think being a female VTuber definitely puts me in a privileged position. And I, you know, like I own up to that. It's, it's, it definitely helps being female and a VTuber because, um, first of all, for for the VTuber, it's I realized that it's really, uh, it's a lot more easier for people to discover you mm. because there's like a lot of people that streams on Twitch, but like the population of VTubers is significantly smaller than, for example, facecam streamers. So mm. if you're if you're small and there you know there's like a specific group of people that only want to watch VTubers and they specifically mostly only look at VTubers. So when they when they look for someone to watch and they look through the VTuber tag, it's a lot like there's a very like there's there's a higher chance for them to find you than for example if you were just another facecam streamer, which would kind of be drowned out by the hundreds and thousands of other ones. So it's it's a lot harder for people to discover. Like for example, you go into any game tag, like and there could be hundreds of people streaming, but if you put in the VTuber tag, there might be like 10 to 20 so it's a lot easier for people to find you um, yeah. in like as opposed to if you were just another face cam streamer yeah and you know being female definitely also helps because um uh like the majority i think a majority of the population that watches twitch are like male straight males <laughs> yeah specifically yeah. like straight fa- <laughs> males and yeah and a lot of them don't really want to watch males right i think i think um they would don't most of them like they either watch females for you know the female <laughs> a lot of times or the personality of stuff but when it comes to males they're a lot more pickier because there isn't anything that attracts them outside the gameplay so they're more right. picky in terms of the, the gameplay that they uh show like they're either like really good gamers <laughs> really good gamers like, really skilled in the game that they play or a very like is like extremely entertaining personality right yeah. no or no. like vi- very known in some aspect yeah, like I, I think you know, from my experience, it's like I you have to be an extremely good entertainer, and some of the people mm-hmm. that have been you know m- very successful right off the bat are usually you know they have some kind of background in entertainment, like they're a comedian mm-hmm. or whatever it may be, or like they have like theater experience, and uh, you mm-hmm. know I definitely think you know it helps like. Also, you know, a lot of people really enjoy over the top kind of like entertainment of some kind if uh, like and and I think a lot of I mean, not to, you know, not to put the people that watch in a category, but it's like people Mm want to meet. It's like it's attractive for people to meet a woman who is into gaming and understands like, you know, who they are. Yeah. You know, they feel like there's like some kind of a connection. And, you know, maybe, you know, a lot of these people don't actually, you know, have luck with women in real life. So, um, <laughs> uh, so and, you know, it's like, Egg oh, my, shells. oh, my God, you know, uh, like this, you know, this cute female character is talking to me and she's super friendly and all these people are really mm-hmm. nice and you know it's kind of like it, it again it's another reason why it's community building um you just described yeah. simp culture i i i i, I, <laughs> I to an extent yeah you know, you know it's uh I, I don't know man um so i've, I've always mm-hmm. thought there's some, like a crazy misconception in the world that like uh like ladies uh, out there don't like video games yeah i and, think like, that's yeah. the longer I, i've lived the more i realize that's not true but yeah. like a lot of guys on the internet still don't believe that like there are women that like video games. So well, I think that's also at yeah, one I think... point it was pretty true, right? Mm-hmm. But gaming as a whole has become way more socially acceptable. 
I think it's less that it's less of, of there's not really females that play video games, more of like in the public, like especially social media sphere on the internet. It's more of a male dominant feel. So like if yeah. you if you look at like pro players, it's all males. So it, like it kind of gives you the misconception that there's only males that play video games. It's, but it's just that the ones that are publicized, the ones that are, are like in the public sphere are all males. So it kind of it kind of gives you like a like an incorrect um, look into the male female ratio in the gaming industry and stuff like that. Well, you know, I also think that, you know, he- heavily at one point, uh, female streamers were kind of taking over Twitch, uh, especially with the meta. Mm-hmm. And it was sort of like... Oh, it was quite the meta, wasn't it? Y- y- well, I mean, I think there was multiple there was, metas. There were multiple <laughs> metas. There were, there were, let's say, gaming and non-gaming metas. So yeah, like... you know, and it's like the um, the meta, you know, it's, I feel like, even uh, as a female myself, I'd say it's like, it's like bring off entertainment you know sometimes if like you know it's in the middle of night i'm really bored i I don't want to think and i don't particularly want to look at any games maybe i'll go look at a girl hula hoops it's shiny lights it's pretty you know (laughs) lights flashing everywhere it's it's good it's good it's aesthetically pleasing and i turn up and i turn off my brain and i look at those lights spin you know (laughs) yeah it's like it was like what, what was the guy that he kind of he had extremely high ratings and he was just some kid who like if he killed somebody, he would just start playing techno and blast like fire in his. Oh my god, it's incredible! Yeah, in his room. Oh yeah, it's literally I... like the epitome of like attention span. <laughs> like, like uh-huh. oh, flashing lights, you know, excitement. Uh, this is amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. very much monkey yeah. brain activate. Yeah, um, people I have. Like, late Damn, I didn't think of it. Damn it's it! It's got that like late night public access television feeling. Where, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the greatest parts of of streaming is that you know you can kind of do whatever the hell you want. Um, mm-hmm. It's true. Um, I, I mean, and I yeah. Oh no, you can go first. You know, I think I think it's you can do whatever the hell you want. So you can have you know you know flame. Like I don't know why you would have flames in your room, but I mean, hey, you know, if you're if you're a rich it's kid, it's got a lot of fuel. Out. You know, hey, it's your house to yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's your house. It's your stream to burn down. You know. <laughs> I mean, I guess you'll get some, you know, money or followers from it. So, I mean, hey, it's a win-win. Or I'd be more concerned about the smoke. That is true. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. He's got to have, like, a vent or something, right? <laughs> so, like, uh, I'm sure this is, I don't know if you guys already asked this, but, like, as a female streamer, do you ever feel like that males are more overly critical of your dick gaming than they need to be? And, like, how do you, like, work past that? I, I, was, literally, I was kind of about to get into that, and I'll just, like, pr- quickly explain that. Uh, like, I've heard, um, of course, yeah, with that, I'm going to add a little caveat to that. I've heard a lot of sexist comments from male streamers, in particular, saying that female scre- uh, streamers are taking attention away from them, which I don't fully believe, but, I mean, you know, I think we kind of like... Yeah, right. so... <laughs> Um, well, I, in terms of the, the video game heart, uh, question, um, I think, I think they're less picky, um, if you're, uh, in terms of video games when it comes to female streamers, because, I don't know, like, they're not really here for good gameplay, right? It, they don't really have that expectation of, like, very good skill, uh, skills that they kind of have towards male streamers, because, um, I guess the, the reason that they're here is, like, of course, they're here for the game too, but I guess the main focal point isn't exactly the game. Like, they're not here to see like uh, pro gameplay. They're more here for like uh, interacting with the streamer, I yeah. think. And yeah, and f- for the sexi- sexist comments, um, it's kind of it's it's kind of I think it's it's probably just like a self victimization uh, mentality because mm-hmm. they like because the way they word it is that female streamers are taking attention away from them yeah and that's with the assumption that if they didn't exist people will watch them it's kind of it's kind of a way to like push responsibility away from themselves as a creator onto other people because if if they're entertaining enough or have something that captures people i'm sure people will watch them for them even if there are like hundreds of other female streamers that are you know doing their own thing yeah. And, and and another th- problem, uh, another problem with these comments is that they kind of they kind of perpetuate that female streamers don't have to try. They kind of just get viewers for being a female, and that is not true. Like even even like you know the the people that get uh criticized the most, like Amaranth. Amaranth tries really hard. Like she works hard, and you know she works yeah, hard. Crazy hours. Yeah, exactly. So it's I don't like it's not really fair to kind of just categorize it as just it's because they're female. It's just yep. that they happen to capture more attention for being female, but 
what what matters in the end is still their hard work and personality and that's, the community they create. Absolutely. I mean, in, in the streaming space, it's a fight for viewership. So you yeah, use I mean, whatever tools you got, you know what I mean? Like all's fair and love and war and Twitch streaming. Yeah, I mean, if you're attractive, it's like it's like it's like saying, like, do attractive people have an edge? And it's like, absolutely, they have an edge. It's like, but can you control that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you could just start hitting your face. <laughs> maybe really that fix works. That. Yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, and I think the thing that is kind Luckily, of. Luckily, I don't have that problem. D- discouraging so. for me, too, is that. Um, <laughs> is that these some of these people that are saying this are uh, successful people in social media, mm-hmm. and at least from my experience meeting them. And it's sort of like, well, you know, everybody can can win. And it's like they're what they're doing does is never going to complaining about them is never going to help you mm-hmm. um, get yeah. any better and to kind of grow as an individual. It's always what you're trying. Like, for example, I can think of one guy that I know who is extremely successful on Twitch and all he does is stream games for 12 hours a day. And he just has a lot of people that, you know, you know, it it helps your discoverability as you're kind of the longer you stream, honestly. And it's like, she said, she streams four or five times, uh, was streaming. I don't know if she's currently does four or five times a a, a week uh, for four hours a day. And not only that, you know, aside from building a, a great community and being relatable, but, um, <clears throat> you know, she's she's there. She she's giving more time for eyes to be on her. So it's like, you know, you got to think it's like lifting weights. It's like you're getting the numbers, the reps in the time. And I don't think that other people should blame like female streamers for their own shortcomings, whatever that may be. Like, you just have to think, okay. think about yourself again. Like she said, it's an excuse. 100 percent um yeah and yeah yeah, like them talking about like complaining about it definitely like doesn't help them out and it kind of shows them as kind of petty and can't you know they can't accept other people doing better than them which is not a very good character trait to show people right and 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 i think yeah you're not going to change that so like you make better content yourself like you know i mean like don't like you know be jealous of other people that's not going to help you that's not going to improve your stream Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah absolutely um and and uh you know uh it, it, again like i think it's it's like it also is the successful people in social media that think well it can't be me it, you know it absolutely because <laughs> i'm i'm doing things right other places you know so it absolutely can't be me but like again uh you have people like i can even think of pooking who like sometimes has like 12 hour streams or eight hour streams and it's like he's grown faster because of it because you know again you know he has he's putting in the work to kind of get that to get that result. pounding that pavement yeah he's pounding the pavement um so with that uh did anyone have any other questions they want to ask tenny before we move on to current events uh i actually had one so i like to kind of like cycle back uh, you said that VTubers have a bunch of stuff that they do that's particular uh-huh. to VTubers. Could you, like, elaborate on that? So, uh, I only realized after I became a VTuber that they have, a. Um, I think it's something that kind of translated from, like, the, um, the big corporate Japanese VTubers, where they'll, uh, where they have this whole thing of debuting. And what, what that is, they'll plan the specific day for their big debut. Like, they could stream beforehand, but they have, like, this official start day. That's kind of like their debut day. And before that, they'll like network. They'll like uh, post a lot on Twitter to like get their name out there before they start streaming. So they kind of gather an audience that are interested in them and anticipating their stream. So and then and then um, and they'll just hype up the day and build connections. And then when that day comes, it'll be uh, they'll they'll like start off pretty good. Like it'll have a good start because they already kind of built a pre-existing like support group before they start streaming. And yeah, it's pretty interesting, and they have, a, and they, and it's like it's this whole like elaborate thing of like, uh, showing their like revealing their model, um, like PowerPoint about their lore, about their interests, likes, and dislikes, and things like that. It's mm. very interesting, and like wow. credits to all the people that made their art and assets and and stuff like that. So it's it's a lot of stuff. It's pretty interesting. Uh, so like, and connected to that, I was gonna mention before about um. The upper hand of being a VTuber is that uh, unlike I feel like unlike um, like real life streamers or like um, uh, 
there's like a tighter knit community when it comes to VTubers because it's it's like a very specific category of um and kind of a niche kind of thing with when it comes to streaming. So like of uh, YouTubers will try to connect with each other and there's like a there's a pretty big community like every, almost everyone like most of the big ones like they know each other and like there's always some sort of connect connection between um like maybe that VTuber you know and that VTuber you know like it's it there's a lot of like mutual friends and stuff like that in the community and like they everyone is like very friendly mm. um maybe sometimes friendly to a fault because a lot of people uh, <laughs> there's a lot of YouTubers that did some problematic things but never got canceled because of that <laughs> but um but yeah, and so so that definitely also helps with growth because people know each other and they'll like rate each other or like tweet at each other or things like that, interact with each other on Twitter. And so I always found that pretty interesting. But yeah, so that's that's something that's pretty interesting about VTubers that maybe you won't know if you're not really in the community. But yeah, it's pretty tight knit. There's a lot of like uh, stuff that they <laughs> they do. There's like occasional VTuber trends that like almost all VTubers interact uh, participate in if they're uh, if they're active on Twitter and like networking and s- threads and stuff like that so that's that's a pretty specific vtuber culture thing that happens like outside of the twitch sphere wow uh that's amazing wow, okay. so so yeah, what you're saying is is vtubers okay. actually help each other is what i'm hearing yeah that's yeah weird. because because <laughs> I, I will say as someone who like kind of looks into frequently looks into like streamers or like you know you've i'm sure you've seen the small streamers connect thing that you know probably everyone mm-hmm. sees and that has never i swear that has never helped anyone kind of it has never helped mm-hmm. anyone grow because 90 percent of the time it's always about other like really ultimately helping someone else and it's never about mm-hmm. them trying to help you or helping each other it's always about you know people just being selfish about number that. one man yeah it's about, about number one mm-hmm. yeah I they're mean, trying to grow they're just joining that they don't want to actually put any like themselves yeah. out there they just want mm-hmm. to be like hey i joined this network other people promote me for me yeah this, this is amazing it really doesn't work that way mm-hmm. yeah it doesn't work that well at the same time i think you're talking about like organized like growth networks Whereas, like, I think it's the like the str- small streamer organizations that are most beneficial. Like, no. I introduced that person at my work that streams. Mm-hmm. You guys have like rated each other each time, and I think like I, I think a big cool part about just being on Twitch and the Twitch community is that like you can like meet people and interact with their communities through like rating, and you can yeah. like grow your channels that way. I, I think ultimately what I'm trying to say, August, is that it's only the people that put that work in to meeting those people and helping them mm-hmm. that does that really ever happen. But rarely does that ever happen, is what I'm trying to say. Is like, yeah. rarely do you ever join one of those small streamers connect and like you actually meet people. Like I've met, I, I will say like, maybe two or three people ever through like the small streamers connect. And it was only when I was going into their streams and like, you know, actively trying to be a community member and help them, you know what I mean? Did it ever kind of, you know, work out that way? Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Like I said, like when I met Tenny, it was because of her community connecting me to her. Um, But yeah. um, Again, I suppose lastly, did, did, did anyone have any other questions that they wanted to I had one more question. Yeah, and go on. Of course, I'm a latecomer, so you guys might already co- uh, covered this. But like, uh, did you ask ask about kind of like the the technology of VTubing? Like, no. How long did that take for you to learn, Teddy? Like, what were some of the hurdles to that? Like, uh, mm-hmm. did you do anything over different? Would you do anything different? Uh, so uh, with the VTuber stuff, there's like two very uh, when it comes to models, there's like two big categories. There's the 2D ones, and then there's the 3D ones. And uh, they're both complicated in their own way. But uh, if you're like starting out and you don't really have the funds to really invest into a model, because 2D models are extremely expensive and custom 3D models are extremely expensive. But there's this thing called a Vroid Studio. That's like a free avatar creation program that lets you essentially um, make your own little 3D avatar that you could control through face rigging and stuff like that. And so a lot of people start off with that one because um, you know it's it's for free and you can try out streaming first to see if you like it. And and that's what I started off with because I, I wasn't really sure if I'm going to stream and I didn't really have the money to commission like a very expensive model. But um, for 3D models, there's also custom ones. So people like on Blender, they'll custom make your um, model and they'll do all the rigging for you and, you know, paint everything for you. And that's also very expensive. But most, most VTubers, especially co- uh, when it comes to corporate ones and big ones, uh, they're usually 2D. And 2D ones are very expensive because 
it takes it's like a two-man job sometimes one person does both jobs but um the art and the rigging come separately and they usually uh they're like the cheaper ones maybe they'll be at around a thousand dollars but the expensive ones they could get up to like six thousand seven thousand like Whoa. if you have a lot of money you can put so much money into this because um <laughs> The cheaper yeah. ones are a thousand. Yeah, like you can you can get maybe like a, a a like very like you get what you pay for, right? Like you can technically get like a three hundred dollar model, but it's not gonna look that good because it's a three hundred dollar you know quality. But, Sounds like uh, that's my niche. Yeah, like it's it's really complicated because it's a lot of hard work that goes. It's a lot of love and hard work that goes into these models. So um, without considering the um, the. The model itself if you're if you're for example maybe not an artist you might have to commission someone to design your character for you before the whole um, process of getting a model and then once you have that design you have to first find an artist that is capable of drawing um uh so the thing about the art that you use for rigging that's different from normal art oh my god cat <laughs> who's the, the cat's name <laughs> uh sabrina oh sabrina oh, sabrina Hi, sabrina oh, hello so cute. hi sabrina hi. <laughs> oh, well, fighter. Ah, uh, why are you tying backwards? <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um. So anyway. Uh. But no. Uh. That's really cool. Like, what kind of like? I assume it's not a normal webcam. Like, what do you use for like face? Uh. Oh no. I use a. I use normal webcam. Oh, but uh, let me. I'll finish the uh, the two D model stuff first. But it's really expensive because um it's a very specific specific scale that people will like uh, develop to uh, for the art because um. Like, if you look at a 2D model, like, all the pieces move, right? And that's because they have to draw every single piece on separate layers, which is a lot of work. It's not just, like, one piece of art. They have to separate each layer, like, um, the left eyeball, the right eyeball, the left eye line, like, the eyelash, mm. the right eyelash, the left, like, oh, cheek and the right yeah. cheek, and, like, top lip, bottom lip, teeth, tongue. It also has to be separate so they could be rigged because they, have, they each have to be manipulated into specific shapes for each for example movement mouth movement so it's a it's a lot of work they have to separate the the head the neck the shoulders the arms and stuff like that the pieces of hair like the bangs the left hair the back hair right hair all, all those pieces they have to make sure that it's separate and that's why it's so much work because unlike just the drawing they have to draw each separate part fully and um, make sure that it's um separated properly and then after you get that art which you probably pay up to or it's to a thousand dollars to a two thousand dollars for um you have to go find someone that's that's able to rig it so they go uh so that's a program i think it's called like live cubism or something where they load all the all the um layers onto the thing and then <laughs> sorry my, my mom just opened the door they have to load all the layers onto the thing and they have to for each movement for example like left head toe right head toe they have to manipulate each layer so it looks like like for example i'm not a 30 model but like if over here they have to shift the head shift all the features make sure like move the hair a little bit to the left like so it there's like it looks like there's gravity and they have to do it for every like head angle every tilt blink mouth movement they have to do it for every single like possible like movement like area and then and then when that all puts together um it could it could um detect what your head position is and, and then show the same thing in the layers. But yeah, so it's it's a lot of money because it's so much work on both the artist and the rigger. So that's why it could go like uh, like two thousand to six thousand dollars for the for the really good ones. Yeah. And another super cool thing about it that could really ramp up the price is that people can have also like figured out to do animations. So there's like expression toggles, but there's also animation toggles where they'll animate specific movements. So, for example, if you if you toggle it, maybe they'll do a little wave or a little dance, and that's like completely like um, frame by frame, essentially animated by the rigger with the body parts. So it's it's very it's really amazing. It's a lot. It's a lot of cool technology stuff. But when it comes to the when it comes, to, yep, oh. sorry, oh, yeah, uh, keep going. Yep, sorry, give me. A oh, okay. <laughs> when it when it comes to tracking, um, the uh. The 3D ones uh, use something, most most people use something called VC face where you can use it with just a webcam. Honestly, most tracking, um, so 2D ones uses things like uh, VTube Studio or another program called like PDP Live or something like that. It, it depends on the program that you prefer. And the 3D ones mostly use uh, something called VC face and you can use your webcam, um, but that has like less um, accurate uh, tracking. So it pretty much tracks the points on your face and it reflects it on the model. But um, a lot of people have uh, a lot of people invest in like uh, if they don't already have iPhones, they invest in like for example iPhones because iPhone has that AR tracking that allows you to do the the emoji thingy. I don't really know what they're called, but um, 
it's the essentially the um the, uh, the technology that lets them do the uh, face ID thing because it scans your whole face in like a 3D sphere and it detects all the little um the little details of your face and and that's why they have the uh, and they have the emoji technology where they could accurately show what your face is doing so um if they if people want to they want a better smoother accurate tra tracking they could use their phone and connect uh connect it to their computer and use the AR tracking on the phone and that allows them for more detailed like face um changes like squints puffing their cheeks out sticking their tongue out like little nose movements mouth movements tilting their mouth to the left tilting their mouth to the right like just all the facial details that and that could also be tracked with the um, with the iPhone. Does that also have to be animated too though? Like when it goes on the Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also a lot of animation for those ones because there's like I don't know, there's like sixty something like um different facial um tracking points for the AR ones. And so for the 3D ones they'll have to do all the um all the iPhone tracking um essentially blend shapes. So it could be like moved towards that blend shape depending on your facial expression. Mm hmm does anyone ever like take their uh like are, so are, first of all are like uh vtuber models like like uh like full body and does anyone ever like take their model on the road like over to vr chat or anything cool like that oh so the cool thing about 3d ones that 2d ones can't do is that 3d ones you can indeed kind of import it into the vr chat file oh. version and then they could indeed, um, and if they have like the full body tracking suit for VR chat, they could indeed put their model into the um, VR chat. And that's why that's why a, a lot of like, for example, corporate VTubers are getting 3D versions of their model so they can exist in a 3D environment if they want to, or like VR chat. So that's pretty cool. But 2D ones are kind of, you know, stuck in the uh, the 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 screen space, 2D the screen 2D space. Yeah. <laughs> stuck in 2D. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so 3D is the play. 3D is the way to go. Well, 2D, 2D is still the most popular Cheaper. and well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, 2D is still the most widely accepted form because uh, with 2D, there's more freedom in terms of what you look like. I think because um, like you could choose the artist based on their art style, right? And so there's mm. the more there's like a more unique expression through like choosing the artist and showing yourself in a specific art style that like kind of comes with. 2D and there's more like you know uh, specific tracking and animation things that can that you can only do with 2D so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. is, is, mm -hmm. is your model 2D or 3D because I honestly I can't tell oh mine is mine is 3D yeah oh definitely mm -hmm. 3D yeah. it's very cool yeah you can it's like, there's I've, like seen a... her, I've seen her turn her head and stuff I'm like yeah that's a <laughs> yeah. cool model mm -hmm. <laughs> thank um, you so with that we should probably move on to current events um, alright you guys are cool with that yeah. Uh, <clears throat> out for oh, before time. that, I should probably yeah, specify something. Go on. Something. Go on. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so uh, I didn't mention it before when I started with the model. Uh, so my, I said I started with the V-Rate model, but I forgot to mention that my current model is not a V-Rate model. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a revamped um, uh, VR chat model. That there's like, there's like the site where people have like pre-made VR chat models, and I kind of took one with a base that I liked. And I put the hair that I wanted, and I changed the textures to to look something more <laughs> unique for me. But yeah, so that's why that's why it looks a little uh, it looks more like two D anime than, um, for example, V Roy models. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just I took the essentially you know stripped the um <laughs> the I bought a VRM uh, a, a not not a VRM a VR chat model like file, and then I stripped the like the hair to clothes and everything, and it just changed the texture as well to into something that is that I identify with more. Mm -hmm. OC, do not steal. <laughs> yeah, OC, do not steal, yes. <laughs> I guess you said you, said you were going to dip out? I'm going to dip out real quick because I drank way too much water, but start without me and I'll be right back. All right, man. Okay. Yep. Don't worry, we already started out without yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that, guys, um, the first on the docket is Capcom Fighting Collection is not a hint at any series revival. Uh, so I, specifically referring to the Darkstalker series. Uh, yeah. L let's see. So, I, I mean, I'm not terribly surprised about this. Um, they have had zero faith in Darkstalker, Darkstalkers for years. Uh, but I think they actually, I'm sorry, on a broader spectrum, um, 
on a broader spectrum, they mean any game that is involved in the fighting collection whatsoever. So that could oh. be, you know... Um, it was just like a last hurrah kind of thing for these games, it seems like, more than anything. I, I mean, I think what they're trying to say is that they'll put them on a collection, but they're not going to mm-hmm. revive the IP itself. They're not going to make new ones. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and, I, I mean, unfortunately, I think a lot of people want a Darkstalkers revival, but realistically, um, will those people actually play the game? That's I don't, the problem. I don't think so. I think it's going to be very niche hardcore audience that are playing this in the first place. Yeah. Um I mean like we would have had more dark stalkers if people bought the games and played them. Well there there was, there was there there was a dark, where we are. There was a dark stalkers revival announced I want to say almost 10 years ago at this point. Uh that nothing and it they had like a trailer and they showed it at E3 and nothing came of it. It there just must not have been enough interest. Yeah. Um, this in the alternate timeline in which you know we... in an alternate timeline instead of street fighter being the main franchise it starts stalkers well street fighters never took off man dark stalkers yeah no that's great i don't want to live in that timeline either the that final fight 89 never took out off it, in the same in the same vein tekken's garbage and virtual fighters on virtual, virtual fighters Fighter the king yeah <laughs> <laughs> all caliber is more popular than League of Legends. I believe it. Man, they really need to bring back. How'd you uh, relate Tekken. those together? I have no right? idea. I, I mean, I, I, man, Tekken. Tekken's got to blow us freaking away after that Street Fighter trailer. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I mean, te- definitely Street Fighter was like, "Yo, you guys want a new fighting game? All Hold right. my beer. Hold my beer." And they, I mean, they've needed to do that. I mean, Street Fighter Five really didn't pop off when it first was i mean people were excited but i mean the mainstream audience wasn't wasn't feeling it um i hated street fighter 5 when it came out it (laughs) It was just a very bland game that's that was my biggest complaint about it it had some cool ideas like i liked the up close very action oriented combat it was a lot less defensive than four but i mean there just wasn't a whole lot of depth there but that was kind of the problem. I mean, ironically, they're bringing back a lot of mechanics from Street Fighter 4. <laughs> so And mixing uh, some 5 in there. They're mixing some 5. Yeah, I think they're finally kind of making the perfect blend of the No the more two games. oh no, no more problems. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a pun in there, but I don't I'll I'll let you guys build up on that. Yeah. I think it's a joke. Um, more oh no, more problems? I don't know. So let's see. So along with that, the irony of the situation, uh, Capcom suggests that they could revive some of their dormant game series, but it's not, it's obviously not going to be Darkstalkers. It's not ones in the collection. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like this was like a, a preface thing to be like, okay, okay. We are bringing things back, but not these. Okay. So don't get your hopes up. Yeah, and it's kind of like, you know, just take these, you know, satisfy, be satisfied with this that we're giving you. <laughs> because there's nothing we more have, You this. even have this collection. <laughs> you know, the thing is, too, is if this thing sells gangbusters, they're probably going to run this back. They're going to be like, no, nah, uh, well, we said that, but... 100%. Like, you can only judge... True, Red Earth 2? You can only judge a company's statements like a quarter, uh, like a quarter, a business Mi- quarter at a time. A quarter mile you know at I mean? a time. Yeah. Quarter mile at a time. Yeah. So like, I mean. Quarter it, kilometer at a time. It's just like when they ask the Marvel actors that we know have been cast in a Marvel movie. It's like, hey, you in that Marvel movie? No, no, I'm not. And then a month later, <laughs> oh yeah, the, the the next lead cast in something. Like, Who would be in a Marvel movie? movie? Not me. Uh, I'm that's not, for sure. I would never play <laughs> Spider-Man. I've never played Spider-Man before. Not this guy. Not this. Meanwhile, like, has it like a Spider-Man mask sticking out of their pocket? <laughs> Even though they all literally like they're when you look up, unfortunately, the Internet exists. So people have had encounters with these people or there have been leaks. And then they literally the actors literally hint at it or tell people on the street that, oh, yeah, that's happening. Like, yeah. I think there was a, a thing where when they they were talking about No Way Home where someone met Tobey Maguire at New York and he's like, hey, 
you playing Spider-Man again? And he's like, he just like winks at him. And then that turns out to be true <laughs> like a year later. Or um, uh, what is it? Uh, who is the other actor uh, that was... I'm sad he just winked and he didn't give him the full finger gun. He probably well. did, yeah. And he probably just did full like... Full finger gun with a little Spider-Man emo dance. dance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so who... Wait, I can't remember the other actor. Uh, he's the amazing Spider-Man actor. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield, Andrew yeah. Garfield, there yeah. was also like an interview with him where he's like starts again winking at like people who are asking him questions, like kind of <laughs> making it super obvious. And then the leaks came out of like the blue screen behind him. He's like, that's yeah. not me. He this just had some in his eye. It's yeah, fine. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, they're not supposed to like say that. I think that's part of like their agreement. Oh, yeah. They're not actually sure supposed to say. Yeah. There was literally a month where, like, I think the movie Kiss Kiss Bang Bang was coming. Was it Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Or whatever the movie he was in. No, I'm thinking of a different movie with Robert Downey Jr. But I... Tick Boom. Tick Tick, tick, tick Boom. boom. Anyway, uh, when that was coming out, where he was promoting it, and people, and it was around the same time as Spider-Man, and he literally had to just lie for, like, I don't know, like, two months to people. Like, oh, this isn't happening. No, I don't... No way. That's not... And then it, can't, it comes out, and he's in the movie. Um... I can't imagine lying that much and that well too. Um, so with, with that, um, with the dormant series it's suggested that obviously like series like resident evil is going to continue monster, uh, monster hunter, but it's saying that they're going to bring back series like lost planet, power stone, Okami specifically, um, beautiful Joe is suggested. Um, Permanent Potter fighting game franchise with hardcore fans. It has a new entry. I don't entry. know if I want another Okami. Oh, Dragon's Dogma too. Um, why? Why not? What's wrong with? Uh... I don't know. I feel. I feel like Okami's story was just over. Like it's. It kind of doesn't need. Well, it does have a sequel on the DS though, doesn't it? You want an Okami game based on the Wolf from Dark Souls One? <laughs> Sif. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sif Okami. But he, but he, he dead though. He good boy. Um, but his his son could take on his legacy. Oh boy, yeah. Oh my god. I, the amount of times that people have used the son taking on the sequel angle inside a video game or a movie, um, yeah. or anime or anime, especially if it's an anime, it's always a bad decision. Uh, usually. True. Uh, Gohan was awful. I mean, people Florida didn't like him. Nice. I know. Uh, or even like I don't know. Is the is the new Inuyasha like with the Inuyasha kids? Is that? I thought that was doing well. I have no idea. I heard it was doing well. I haven't seen it. Until it has five hundred episodes. Give a shit about Inuyasha. (laughs) Until it has five hundred episodes. Yeah, until it's it's as many episodes as original Inuyasha. I'm not gonna talk about it. Uh, Fair. All right, so I guess we can move on to the Sony State of Play then. All Um, right. So the juicy one. Some of the games that were announced uh, were is Resident Evil Four, Spider Man Remastered on PC, um, Horizon Zero, uh, Horizon Forbidden West update. I don't really know what that entailed. Horizon Call of the Mountains for PS VR Two, uh, which is a great name for PS VR. Uh, the Callisto Project trailer came out. Roller Dome, uh, Ether Knights, uh, Resident Evil Village for PSVR 2, Final Fantasy 16, Street Fighter 6, Tunic is coming to P- PlayStation, Season, A Letter to the Future, and Stray, the uh, Kitty Simulator. Essentially. Simulator. <laughs> Kitty Cyberpunk Simulator. Cyberpunk simulator. Uh with with some like Resident Evil mixed in. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Yeah, there's like monsters and shit. In, in what game? Not, Sorry, I didn't in Stray. Yeah. In Stray? Oh yeah. yeah Actually, yeah, that there's game like monsters and growths and all kinds of icky shit. So did did anybody get a chance to check out these trailers? Yeah. Yeah, I saw all of them. Uh, mo- like I think just I just missed one. I watched most of them. Um, so with that, yeah, yeah, it does say cyberpunk cat game. What <laughs> the hell? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's 
You're just like a mail delivery cat. Oh <laughs> man, with uh, so with uh, what it's the hell? It's Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Yeah. <laughs> cat Stranding. So with that, guys, did did anybody have like anything that really stuck out to them? Did, does anybody want to talk about Stray first or? Uh, I thought I thought Stray looked super interesting. Like <laughs> we we've seen the announcement before, and I was just kind of like, okay, cat game, cool. But then now we have like the actual like gameplay trailer where you're like doing like all this like parkour stuff and being awesome and delivering letters and interacting with people, escaping monsters, escaping robots. It seems really interesting. It looks like a fun game, mm-hmm. like a fun and little platformer survival type thingy. Yeah, and with the uh, the beginning of the trailer with the tiny cat and the like really long TV man, it made me think of like little nightmares. Kind of, it gives me that vibe. Oh, yeah, yeah, same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who thought that, like, having a cat deliver mail would be a good idea, because I feel like that's the worst idea. <laughs> good idea. But, I it mean, has, like, a robot like, that guides cool. them. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, but cats, like, are just like, well, what if, they're, if the cat's just like, I don't care, I don't want to deliver this mail. He's not going to do it. Yeah, just... but you are the cat. That's oh, the cat. Yeah, but you oh. are the cat. I am the cat. Oh, I liked how many things it knocked over in the trailer, too. It was very cat-like. Perfect. Um, cool. I'm feeling you it, know, man. It was... I am, too. I am, too. I think it's a game I will certainly watch someone play. I don't know if I can emotionally handle playing it myself, because if I get a game <laughs> over, I'd probably, like, cry for, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but, like, true. It, it definitely looks fun. You know, somebody's going to have like a death scene cat c- compilation oh. somewhere on YouTube. Oh, oh no. Yeah, Come some on. asshole. Yeah, right? Um, it'll it'll just push me to be a better gamer so the cat doesn't Tomb die. Raider, Tomb Raider uh, death compilations. I couldn't I couldn't do it. Um, yeah, honestly, for, for me, I feel like this is like the most original, one of the most original games that have come out in a while, at least on a major platform, that like Sony has promoted. You know, other than yeah. like, you know, the Steam games that people have been taught you know they pop up every once in a while uh i'm yeah. really happy that they're actually putting their faith into something that's you know not god of war or you know definitely spider band or something. i'm just surprised how fast like the opinions on the game shifted because most people were like in my camp with the eh look cat game looks kind of okay fine mm-hmm. but then this new trailer came out and people were like this this is pretty hype I'm gonna get this, you know? Like, it shows it shows what, like, a good trailer can actually do for a game. <laughs> I think I think the first trailer had more cat bat. Um, and more cat walking around doing nothing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see it looks like, why... It looks like a whole different game. It does, yeah. I mean, I don't know why, like, all of the enemies are cat-shaped. But or cat sized, but you know, I'm sure it all kind of relates. I'm interested to see. Oh, I'm sure where there's the... something giant that'll just grab you and ruin your day. You just can't I mean, let like, them pick you up. That's what's crazy. Like the giant would be human sized because you're playing from the cat's perspective. Exactly. It's like it's all. It's like when I pick up my cat and she gets really upset. I I have to imagine. Oh, what if I was her size and someone randomly just picked me up? I'd be pretty upset too. Right. Um, yeah, it's a cool sounding game. Uh, the other games yeah. on this list honestly sounded really cool too. Like, mm-hmm. I know there's that one, like Ark Knights or not Ark Knights. That's a mobile game. Uh, what was it? Knight something Knight. Errant Knight. Uh, here. Uh, y- oh, Ether Knights. Ether Knights. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be like oh. a mix between like a uh, like the, a the VR dating, sim. dating sim and like an action JRPG. Oh my like, god! Like I'm assuming it's gonna be almost like a Persona, but like not quite. But it sounds cool. Like I love action RPGs. I thought it looked awful. I can't wait to not <laughs> I, play that. Yeah, I I also can't wait to not play that. Also, the scene with like hold hands by holding the like oh or something is so <laughs> funny. People are memeing the hell out of that. <laughs> oh my god! Hold god. down R two to hold hands. Oh my god! That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> Finally, human Finally, connection. Finally, I can hold my wife's <laughs> hand. Oh man. Bro, I don't, I, I don't know. This every like, day we stray further from the light of God. <laughs> I think that's the perfect amount of cringe for me. Is that's it? 
Is it because I think it's probably gonna be hilarious? For me, it was like when I played New Gundam Breakers and I found out there was a waifu simulator, and specifically the story about Gundams revolved around waifus. I became immediately uninterested. Well, in... I'll they always that. do. I'll agree that there's really always a waifu in Gundam stories. Usually, there. I feel it's like an integral part of the story. By the way, well, I don't know. I kind of always felt like certain Gundam games revolved around husbandos, but. I mean, particularly. I mean, games, some, yeah, but most most games just like follow one of the multiple Gundam narratives, which revolve around that, some kind of plot, which always have like a center female character. She usually has like a love triangle, like Gundam 78 or some, 79. Sometimes. Yeah, like sometimes. Kila, Kilala from, uh, uh, is it Kilala? Uh, something like that, but from from the original Gundam, like her, him and her and... Char, Amaro, and her had like a love triangle, which was like a yeah, cor- like other than them hating each other, it was like a center for for tension. Yeah, but it was also it was also like um one of Amaro's like driving forces. Well, yeah, because she's like a new type, and Amaro just wants to be with her, but Char likes her, but also wants to weaponize her. Uh, yeah, but yeah, great mecha anime with teenagers. Yeah, as they all so are. every every mecha anime. So every ep- yes. mecha anime. I think they're all they're all teenagers all the way up. You're not wrong, um, but I don't know, uh, Tenny. Like, did anything else in this list stick out to you? Like, is there anything you'd play on stream? Like, I don't know. Well, I assume you play a lot of fighting games, but I don't know where if you play anything else. Well, I I have to, I don't actually play as much fighting games as you think. Like, the only one that I really play is Strive, and I haven't been playing that too much recently. But I think the one that that I'm like pretty excited for is final fantasy 16 hey. that looks super sick like the graphics is amazing and like the fighting from the trailer it makes me think of like devil may cry with how they're like zooming around jumping and like all the light effects and i think that's really sick kaiju yes. battles with with summons kaiju battles with summons <laughs> sounds pretty cool you um, freaking just beat the shit out of shiva or whatever that's, yeah, awesome I, that looks sick yeah, it it seems like also they're... we're going back to like fantasy. We're going back to the fantasy part of Final Fantasy. It's wonderful. Yeah, that's true. It's not it's not even like um like fifteen or yeah road trip or like the road trip one, or <laughs> or seven where it's like kind of like it has cyberpunk aspects to yeah, it. No, we're we're more like of like a Final Fantasy like four ish kind of timeline. It seems like four band. Okay. Um, Boy band simulator. Yo, August. Yeah, I was gonna say didn't like boy band, boy band driving around. They had a cool car. They had a cool car. car. Was really cool. cool. You could like yeah. fly and shit. Fly, Yo, I... go on water, do whatever you want. Great gas mileage. It was perfect. <laughs> Wait, do you have to get gas in that game? I mean, you have to make stops. Gas station. I can't remember. If yeah. Actually... Um, well, August, do you happen to have like a, a different microphone? By chance, like that you could try to use. Only have this headset. Am I like super, super quiet? Like, how bad is it? It's like usually the normal amount of bad that your your microphone uh, produces. Uh, Yo, you need to buy a microphone, dude. We plug in. Whoa, Jesus! Now, and now you have no sound. <laughs> now you have no sound. Yeah, no one can hear you. This is actually a downgrade. Yeah, you actually downgrade. I think it's because you have to go into settings and then you you have to change your microphone. Yeah. I could try turning off like the noise gate. I don't know if that's gonna help. Oh, uh, that it'll definitely that, that won't help. The noise anything. gate. Yeah. Oh, no, don't you dare. <laughs> I think if you go into sounds and you go to the recording devices, you can um like if you go into the properties of it, you can increase the uh the the microphone level to yeah, pick up more that sounds. Might yeah. That also might sound horrible, but we'll see. But hey, I mean, at least we'll be able to hear you. True. Uh, but it might just be. A... Exactly. You know? Uh, so yeah, with, with the, with the Final Fantasy 16, it looks really good. I'm excited to see them go back to fantasy, like you were saying. Um, yeah. the summon battles, obviously they're, they're going to be heavy, heavily related to sort of, um, oh my God, what was I going to say? Like the combat system is going to be similar to Final Fantasy 7 remake and, uh, Final Fantasy 15, 15, which, yeah, it looked, it looked very 15 ish mm-hmm. with the combat. Yeah, well, fifteen had good combat. Well, good ish combat. I've never really played any Final Fantasy game because uh, I don't know. I never really 
grew up with it. Uh, the only one that I played is Final Fantasy XIV, which is, you know, very different. Right. Uh, from all the... different, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so am I, am I any louder? No. Um, not really, no. Oh, that's so sad. When you, okay. use your, when you use your laptop's microphone, I could hear you better, though. Okay. Yeah. You want me um, back to that? Yeah, if you could just change the microphone. You don't have to unplug your headset, but change your microphone. Is it better? Oh, okay. Change oh, your wow. microphone. Oh, sorry. Oh. Change your microphone. <laughs> change your microphone. Change the input to the headset. Yeah, we, we can do that. It's fine. How? That was loud. And then we can we we're gonna turn you down because you're at two hundred percent. I had him at two hundred, and then just yeah, me too. I was I was assaulted. <laughs> All right. So I guess neighbors woke up. I guess from that uh, we can move on. I don't. I don't necessarily care too much about the are you changing your settings at all because if you're not i'm going to turn you back up to 200 i'm working on it i'm working okay speaker all right i don't really care too much about the uh vr stuff because i'm never gonna have ps vr too yeah is anyone else gonna have the the resident evil village having vr is kind of funny though everyone can finally firsthand people with vr can finally you know firsthand experience the uh the tall vampire mommy <laughs> the mommy milkers for a nice yeah. little slap <laughs> bro i still can't Download believe that fly swatter mod oh, <laughs> <laughs> only on playstation is that better no but it's fine. We'll let it. We'll deal with it. I'm gonna turn you back up. I to felt 200. like I was alone in the internet thinking she wasn't that attractive. <laughs> I was like, I'm just in a fucking wasteland. I'm like, I, I she's think she so, appeals she's to okay. specific people. Yeah, like, specific I, I think she's okay people. too. But yeah, if you're on the like, yeah. you want to be stepped on demographic. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm not part of that. <laughs> but I feel like they kind of like letter lately. Video games have been zooming on, zooming in on that demographic. Uh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean having strong females? De- demographic, I would say. Like, like literally small. strong. I, not like not like well written. Just literally, just strong as hell. <laughs> she's just she's just angry all the time. Uh, she's just angry, big and strong. It's just a, like a whole lot of kink going oh, and, on here, and only in like a fourth of the game. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> a lot of people were kind of like. I thought she'd be a bigger part. No, everybody did, but I don't think Capcom knew that she was going to be as like what do you mean? They big made the as game. she was. They did, but again, <laughs> as big as she was, <laughs> she was, she was she at was. the forefront of like all advertising. Yeah, but you can't expect viral marketing to happen from uh, like I, I really don't think that they expected her to be that big, or or you know you would have. Uh, you know, she would be, would have been more in the game. Like, but think about it. When any character that has a nemesis system is always gone, usually like one, like a third through the game of any Capcom risen evil, typically. I like, guess, but... it's always the first part of like, look at RE2 remake or RE3. Um, they kind of eventually the, the, the nemesis characters. Oh, look, it's our special <laughs> guest. Meow, <laughs> I'm here. Um, but yeah, I just didn't think that they knew that it was going to happen. Um, let's see. This is looking over like, oh, you're approaching me. Oh, you approach me. So yeah, oh. I, I mean, I mean, I'm happy for, for you guys. Did anybody see the trailer for Roller Dome? I did. I did. That looks great. Art style is neat. It doesn't look like a game of play, but the art style is neat. <laughs> to me, it yeah. looks, it's, yeah, it's well, like a jet set, but not a jet set. I don't know. I really like the physics of that game. It I, looks very cool. I didn't think it looked anything like Jet Set. Jet Set has like its, it's very own style. It's, it definitely has a Jet Set vibe, in my opinion. Uh, is that because they're rollerblading? No, it's yes. because of, it's because of the cell. Well, it's that and the cell shaded <laughs> graphics. Yeah, the art style is really cool. It's very like comic-y. Yeah, very very like minimalistic comic vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got it's got like an early two thousands look to it. Um, no, not it even looks, that. It looks really good. Yeah. Plus, I haven't seen a game with that much aerial mobility in a while, so that'll be yeah. kind of cool. And and like I've never seen a game that had like incorporated roller. No, I'm sorry, uh, roller skates and guns. And I'm all about. Oh, they're, and, they're games. 
and, and with okay. with like Tony Hawk type uh, tricks you can do, yeah. and and mm-hmm. boss fights that they're gonna add into it. Um, I've just and I've trick never, shots and trick shots. I mean, I've that's, never... just what, that's just what Tony Hawk needed was boss fights. I think that was what it, <laughs> what would have put over the top. So, I mean, like you just start like trying to out trick the other person. <laughs> I actually I'm think that talking. exists. That probably exists. Was, wasn't there one... There was, to- there was one Tony Hawk game where in the story mode you literally fought like a robot. I think you're thinking of Tony Hawk. I'm not Hawk. going crazy here. It might have been right? one of the undergrounds. Yeah, like it might have been one or two. I, yeah. yeah, it was probably one of the undergrounds. This game's are crazy. The Fireball War in one. I yeah. think I, I will be playing this game. And then there was game. a bunch of like boss battles in quotes where you literally had like trick battles against people. Yeah, th- no gu- no guns though. I miss those games. W- makes me wonder why. They, Unfortunately, they didn't make an Underground Three. Um, but yeah, no, I I think I think this game's gonna be rad, and I'm excited to play it. I dig like the weirdness of it. It also has like a like a what's the what's the name of that game? Not Thunderdome, but like the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh movie from the eighties. Uh. Why are you gonna be a little more specific? The the Conan. one he's definitely talking about Conan the Barbarian. No, I'm talking about the one where they they're stuck in like a death battle type situation. Uh, I think the closest thing you could think of is, uh... oh my god, what? It's like where a bunch of high school students are stuck. They have to kill each other. Like only well, one survives. Battle Royale. Yeah, it's it's basically battle royale is inspired by that. Like it just it takes influence from it, uh, at least the the basic theme of it. But it has like I don't know, it has that you're kind of. I, you're gonna have to. I don't know. Was inspired know. by that. Yeah, there's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where they're stuck in uh, like a competition against each other to to have to kill uh, one another. Essentially, it's like the first movie to kind of do that to do that. Oh, but I, I mean, Battle Royale was a manga first, so. Right, but this this came out in like the eighties, like early eighties. Um, I think Battle Royale did too. I don't know. It doesn't it, matter. It it really doesn't. Um, we can we can look this up later. Uh, so I I don't know. Did anybody or not. S- anybody see? Uh, <laughs> it, was there anything else that stuck out to anybody? I mean, obviously we had Street Fighter Six and Resident Evil Four. I mean, 4. yeah, Street Fighter mm-hmm. Six and Resident Evil Four. Like, Let, let's do uh, let's do Resident back. Evil. Let's do Resident Evil Four first, and then we can um, we can go back sure. to because Street Fighter Six is we're gonna have the most to talk about. I'll I'll fangirl over some Resident Evil Four. So, a uh, real question here is: Do you think Leon will have his jacket throughout the entire movie, the entire game? This is really this is a real question here because <laughs> he loses the jacket in the original game, and I think a lot I of think people he's were gonna disappointed. Lose it instantaneously. I don't know, man. It just shows him. To keep shows the him. spirit of the game. I feel like there's going to be of coat, jacket loss. coat mechanics built into it, where if you don't have the coat <laughs> on, you start getting cold and you start losing life. I think that's going to be a thing. Or you're like Mario when you lose your hat, you just take double damage. Wait, what's that from? Is that from uh, like... Mario 64? Well, how do you lose your hat? Super Mario 64 in... Um... Dry, dry desert or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, what is it fucking called? Ah, uh, whatever. The desert level. In the desert level, there's a vulture that can swoop down, mm-hmm. and he just swoops down and grabs your hat. Really? Like an yeah. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Happened dude. to me as a child. I was very upset. <laughs> At least he didn't pick you up, you know, like an eagle, and just carry you away to eat you. That'd be better, because then you're not taking double damage and trying to chase and get your hat Yeah, back. but he's one-shotting you, okay? <laughs> That's fine. I'm back with my hat. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, th- what do you guys think about the Resident Evil 4 trailer? Does anybody have any sort of, like, connection to Resident Evil 4? Also, I, mean, I love Resident Evil 4. I yeah. have played the shit out of it. And the trailer doesn't show too incredibly much. Um... We mm-hmm. kind of get to see some slight redesigns for characters. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's just like, oh, yeah, Resident Evil 4 is a thing. Oh, here it's coming. Oh, look, here's Sherry. She looks different. She does, yeah. Uh, it, it <laughs> I basi- don't know. It basically shows that they, they're they actually, they're, they're having a lot of the same story beats. 
Uh, yeah. Well, just, I hope so. I hope they follow the whole story. <laughs> I want a one-to-one remake. Oh, man. This I would is, take that. Would you? Yeah. Well, okay, not one-to-one. I want Sherry's mechanics incredibly improved. <laughs> What if they you just... wanted to be like Elizabeth from uh, Bioshock, which is yes, MMO? yes, that's fine. Sure, anything to just like stop making her awful. Leon, yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing too, escort is, me. I think that they're gonna delve hey, into what are you looking at? more uh, serious. Like the first game is camp. The first RE4 is camp, of course. This one is probably still gonna be a little camp. But it looks to be a more serious take on Resident Evil it 4. It had, had more of like a village vibe to it, didn't it? Well, yeah, they're going to reuse that's, assets. That was, that I'm sorry. Kind of, yeah, that was that was what I was getting. I was like, mm, it's kind of villagey, which makes sense. I, It's fine. They're well, both set in a village. It's close enough. A, a lot of a lot of people were talking about when Resident Evil 8 come out, came out that they're, oh, they're doing this because they intend to make a Resident Evil 4. <laughs> remake uh which is why it looks similar because it's like interesting logical leap it's i mean they they hinted at making resident evil 4 for a while before 8 came out so it's not it's not completely unrealistic um no and and like look at look at resident evil 3 and 2 remake like look at how many assets they reuse i don't i don't think we need to look at three but if you look at three you can see the reused assets damn it (laughs) All I see is missing levels. I wish I could like Resident Evil. I can enjoy Resident Evil because I I like the concept of it. I like the uh, I like the way it looks and it uh, and the way it plays. But the problem is, uh, I Resident Evil is not made for me to play because I personally hate zombies. So every you know how the the point of the game is that you have to avoid the zombies. So you you know you save your resources, you save your bullets, right? But the thing is, I hate zombies and the sound of zombies, so I will kill. Ev- I will make sure every single zombie I encounter is dead, so I don't have to see it, I don't have to hear it, and so I play. A valid Evil. strategy to remake, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I played. Re- uh, I played two remake, right? And the problem is, I I got to a point where I used every bullet, even all the bullets that I could like that, that I could you- collect, and like yeah. at th- at the part that I was at, and I completely wow. ran out of bullets, and I was stuck. <laughs> Wow, that, that's a lot of bullets. Yeah. <laughs> it very much encourages you to, you know, have a good shot too. So yeah, mm-hmm. if you're if you're gonna be efficient, like, you know, you better shoot them in the head correctly to move on. Yeah. Are you saying she has bad aim? Look, I'm just saying <laughs> that it suggests that she could have bad aim. Okay, I'm I'm not saying she I does because think... I've never seen it. Okay, possibly yeah. implying. Yeah. Yeah, one of the biggest reasons why I ran out so much bullets is because I never really played a Resident Evil before, so I didn't realize that I was supposed to board up the windows. So they kept respawning, and I had mm-hmm. to kept killing them, and that oh. took a lot of bullets. Mm-hmm. So I imagine you also shot them when they were on the ground already, too. Maybe once or twice. <laughs> if you so that's the thing is like once you play through the game once you kind of learn oh this is where i gotta board up a window because later on if i don't it's gonna screw me over yeah um not only that but like yeah obviously you do run out you start to run out of ammo but there's a lot of people you can run past um and you kind of want to save your ammunition for when there's a boss fight um or when you absolutely have to kill something or because you're gonna take damage there are situations where, like, if I take damage from this person, I'm going to die. And uh, obviously that can't that can't happen. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I literally never ran out of ammo in Village. Well, yeah, it's like it never. Ammo's just abundant. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it's just more of a shooting game than a Resident Evil game. <laughs> well, Resident Evil 4 was like that, too. Um if well, to you an ex- to an extent what do you mean there was like literally ammo everywhere i mean yeah there was there was ammo everywhere mm-hmm. but at the same time the further you got in it got a little more scarce and you had to use more of like your kicks and just that you know so the yeah. that's the thing is i've already played it a few times um, so so i'm or i'm already playing optimally usually so oh, fair enough. I mean, I don't think the thing is, I don't think about shoot, ammo anymore. Shoot, kick, knife. Shoot, <laughs> shoot, kick, knife or like 
Right. I, I don't really think about the ammunition anymore. So it's like, again, I, I have to speak from a point of already knowing. I've an elitist. Pl- I've played that game more than a few times because I love Resident Evil 4. Um, August, do you have any... Have, which, which is your favorite version? Like, have you played, like, the the regular version, like PlayStation, uh, the Wii version, which I know uses, like, the Wii motion controls? Uh, I keep meaning to buy the VR version because I heard it's fun, even with, oh, the, damn. with the changes, but... Did- I haven't played it yet. I would love to play the the VR version of that game. Same. Same. Um, Mine's an easy choice for this GameCube version. Actually, I'm gonna say that the GameCube version of the PC version, the Steam version, are my favorite. Though the Steam version has some issues. Like, okay, you know how they have QTEs. So there's yep. there are certain QTEs that have issues with. You can change the frame rate from 30 FPS to 60 FPS. And when oh, you no, do that, double. and when you do that, you're doubling the speed of the QTEs. Some of them are impossible without changing the. Not just Boulder. <laughs> yeah, some of them are impossible <laughs> or way harder if you don't That's change dumb. the FPS back to thirty. So That's it's hilarious. Yeah, it literally is like a built-in bug, but it, it looks great. My my my, the worst one I've ever played is the PS2 version. Because that thing chugs. It not only does it chug, but the zombie, uh, the zombies look terrible. The Zamboni. whole, the whole, the whole thing looks like shit compared load to load screens. The, load screens uh, compared to the uh, GameCube version, it looks horrible. They also, because it looks horrible and it chugs, they reuse like a certain zombie asset more than others. So you keep seeing the same ones opposed to like on the GameCube version, you like yeah. hardly like you don't see the same ones as much. Um, so it's yeah. kind of funny that way. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited for the four remake. I'll be playing it day one. P- PS2 is easily the worst version. Yeah, it's it's is, free. It's it really easy. Awful. Yeah, um, I would say I haven't played the Wii version. A lot of people say that's the best way to play it. Uh, Because it has the best, yeah, it has. It actually has super accurate aiming, believe it or not. Um, So yeah, I I I definitely want to try that at some point. Um, I mean, GameCube didn't have the best aiming, so makes sense. Oh, someone's knocking on the door. All right, so uh, I guess we can we can move on to Street Fighter Six then. Unless anyone had a Street Fighter Six, there is another game though that's pretty interesting to me on the list. Absolutely, I think. I'm pretty interested in season because from the trailer, like the uh, like the scenery composition, the color palette is absolutely beautiful. Like it's that such an artistically amazing, yeah. unique game. Yeah, um, the I just noticed this. I think that the uh, I think the main character is trans. I didn't even oh. notice that the first time around because they keep refer- they keep referring to the main character as as a as a female. But they also have like mm-hmm. male sort of looking attributes. So, um, but then again, I haven't played the game, so it could be. I mean, I could be confusing things. But yeah, I was really surprised when I found out it wasn't an Annapurna game because, like, this is totally something Annapurna Interactive would make. But like, I guess it's by someone else. Do they? Are those the people that make like Journey and? Um... Yeah, yeah, they make a ton of like cool indie-ish stuff. Um, We're back. They made that like uh ah uh, it's that like dancing like dream game where you're like in a dream a while back I can't remember I have it on like two different consoles but uh yeah Annapurna just makes cool indie stuff that's like it's got its own vibe to it and I was surprised that they weren't the ones producing this but it looks cool I I'll definitely probably watch like you know some of it I don't know if I'll get it but I'll definitely check it out it does look mm-hmm. interesting um yeah. Was there? I mean, it looks like it. It definitely doesn't look like it has action. Um, mm-hmm. It seems probably like a story-driven kind of adventure game. Mm-hmm. And d- maybe I, I'm assuming that the uh, what is it the the story plot would probably be kind of like a, a nostalgic, bittersweet thing because it is called like a letter to the future, and there seems to be like photograph mechanics to maybe indicate some kind of memory-themed like storytelling. Yeah, no, I could see that. Um, mm-hmm. It is strange. Like, I'm, I'm I, it, it looks like obviously one of those games that like there, there's a whole lot of mystery through it. I hope you can like go through and explore the forest or, you know, you can just like go mm-hmm. off the beaten path. That would be really cool. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does have, it looks very vibrant. And it almost looks like an A24 movie in a way, if anybody knows yeah, what that is. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Um, super vibrant colors. It looks like this could easily be a horror movie. Like, it could just turn into a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it also, like, the way the colors and compositions are and the char- and the proportions of the characters also makes me kind of think of, like, Ghibli movies a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. Um, has, like, a very, mm-hmm. you know, cartoony type look. Um yeah. And uh damn it, I was just about to say something about it. It lo- it also looks a lot like Breath of the Wild uh in mm. a way. Like a slightly Wild low poly smooth kind of look. Yeah. Like for as as we can see like it really seems like cell shading's coming back. Mm-hmm. Like people are really vibing awesome. on on cell shading in in a way. Like I love cell shading. But uh, it's like her? Yeah, Wind Waker. It looks like a lot of uh, influence from the early two thousands for some reason. I don't know why it's so popular, but um, oh, cell shading games also tend to age extremely well, so that's yeah. always nice. I mean, Wind Waker looks still mm-hmm. looks good. Yeah, Wind Waker still looks good. Yeah. Um. So with that, does anybody have have anything else they wanted to say about uh, this game before we move on? Excited right. for Spider Man. But... Spider Man on the PC. Yeah. yeah, I can actually play the yep. game now. I can't yeah, wait I'll until Spider Man My- Miles Morales comes out in ten years. No, they PC. said it's going to be later on in the year. Really? Supposedly. So, yeah. Oh, that's neat. I've heard a lot of good things about Spider Man. We take those. <laughs> Me too. So it's a good game. Yeah. I'm just happy it's coming to Steam and not Epic. <laughs> oh God, <True>. yeah. <laughs> yep. Um. All right, so I guess we can move on to Street Fighter Six. Now, who wants to no, go no first? No, no, Callisto Protocol. No, Callisto so Protocol. I am hype about that, but like, as someone who's just super into like the very dark, visceral horror games, I'm like, oh, scratches a certain deep itch. Here, I'm Especially gonna... that it's, it's by the makers of uh, Dead Space. Yeah, um, the ones who like, left. Oh, that's Originally, right. it was going to be part of the, the PUBG universe, but I guess they, they canceled that. But it still looks super cool. It's going to scare the I children. Personally, oh, when I'll play it. It's going to scare crap out of people. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate, like, icky, sticky, uh, rotting people aesthetic. <laughs> that's why I don't like zombies. <laughs> ah. I'll monkey, because that's going to be the whole game. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I personally can't wait to see someone's face get eaten off. Like, that's that, I'm so excited. Oh, yikes. All right. Yeah, uh, and, I mean, I, I think I beat Dead Space 1 for the first time during Halloween because we were doing spooky games. Hell yeah. And so, like, seeing this, I was like, wow, this is this is Dead Space. This might as well just be Dead Space. Yeah, um, yep. It is. Yep. And, uh, I mean, like, like Quintessence was saying, like, it's made by the same Dead Space people. Um, it looks pretty rad. I mean, it looks like it also might have a nemesis system with that robot that was, like, murdering people. It uh, looks like yeah, you're on like some, some kind of a prison colony um, of some kind where, I mean, I'm going to guess that they're experimenting on people. Um, I mean, if it's oh, good enough for Doom, it's good enough for us. If it's good enough for Doom. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's going to be really interesting. <laughs> I don't think I'll buy it day one. Well, your cat has a lot of opinions on this game, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, he's excited. He's hyped. What do you okay? Yeah. All right. What else? Um. So yeah. Let me get on this conversation. Did Did anybody else have any any opinions on Callisto? Before we move on. Yeah. No, that, that's that's a sum of mine. Yeah, it's Dead Space. There we go. What a it's like cool Dead Space game. What a review. Um, it's like cool Dead Space game. Let's move on to Street Fighter Six. So, Aww. August, I didn't get to hear your opinion on Street Fighter VI. I am exceedingly hyped for this. Um, I haven't uh, gotten enough time to take a look at how the actual mechanics will work. I know they have like a, a kind of a parry system that's based on meter. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something I kind of wanted for five. So I'm I'm really excited. That's that's coming in for six. Um, I really like the realistic graphics. I think that's that's definitely a turn that I think Street Fighter uh, should have made a while ago. Um, and now that the technology is there, um, especially because they're using the RE engine, mm-hmm. um, uh, I definitely think uh, it's it's the time to do it. Love that they're bringing the hip hop aesthetic back. Uh, I mean that it worked for uh, SF3. 
I mean, it can't not work again. Everyone loves that. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm a little dubious about the weird, like, uh, like open world, like interactive mode thing. Uh, Any I don't character? know how that's gonna involve in like the this, this story mode or whatever, but I mean, honestly, it'll, if you even have some like basic beat em up mechanics, it could be fun. Um, and I mean, the gameplay looks great. Graphics are great. Um, my dream for it would be like, let's see a giant roster. Let's see like the biggest roster we've ever seen in Street Fighter. Like support this game for like six years. I don't care, but like I want like forty characters by the time we're done. So, uh, but... so you know that there's like barely any characters that they could include from past games. So th- what do you th- mean? Like there's only a few characters left that they haven't included in Street Fighter Five. Well, that's what I'm saying. I like. I want the characters from Five. I want the new characters. I will like if I can see every character ever that has ever been in a Street Fighter game back or in this new game. I'd love it. I know I'll never get that because there's like I think sixty some odd Street Fighter characters, not including like Final Fight characters. But I mean, I'd love to see a lot of weird characters back. Like I know we're getting DJ back. That could be real interesting with like a redesign. Yep. Because um, I know people didn't like him in Four, but I thought he was kind of cool, and I loved him from Two. I always um, love seeing really good DJ players because yep, they're always so cool. rare and it's like, man, they always play super well. Anyway. Um, one of the, the characters in the, the trailer, uh, Jaime, is like a drunken boxer, which mm-hmm. I know is an archetype a lot of people oh, wanted for a long time. You mean time. Jamie? Or Jamie? I don't know if it's Jamie <laughs> or Jaime. I don't. I, I have no idea. Uh, it's Jamie, it's, a, it's, a, it's a drunken boxer with like a Spanish name. Like That's a little confusing, but I'm okay with it. As Jamie's, as it look- is Jamie Spanish? I don't think it's Spanish, is it? might be uh, and anyway it, does, it doesn't matter anyway yeah but it looks cool um i'd love to see as much people hated him i'd love to see el forte back um, i was really surprised uh okay, what's his name what's the what's the blonde guy that's the lead character from four i was really surprised he did abel i was really surprised abel didn't come back for five because his character models in the game people hate it um so i was i, I would have been okay with there, there actually but, looks um, to be a female character that's gonna take abel's place if you look at the yep. leaked roster but yeah yep, i saw that Yep, I saw that. I can't remember her name, but yeah, she's a Jack Jack German lady. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really excited. Quite the spectacle. Yeah, I, I mean, Cammy has pants a now. A lot of new. I'm characters. happy to see it. I mean, I think it's, it's oh, not a, for long. Costume change overdue. Oh, of course not. I mean, they'll, uh, you know, they know where they make their money. <laughs> there's, there's already a leaked video of her in her original outfit. Yeah, it's it's why Chun Li has like 40 costumes. Like they know it's Street Fighter. Badonk becomes, and donk on full display, yeah, of course. They, Street Fighter just becomes a waifu simulator uh, as the game goes along. But I mean, you know, they have to. You know, devs got to get paid too. I get it. Um, yeah. I just want the gameplay to be good, and if the gameplay is good. Yeah, I'll be playing this day one. It looks so like weighty and good. It yeah. really looks mm-hmm. really it, good. It does look really cool. So I kind of wish they zoomed the like camera the out a little bit. Were insane. Yeah, they look good. I, I kind of wish they zoomed the camera out a little bit because that's kind of one of the changes that I missed from four being like a little wider angle and five was a little tighter in. Or maybe I'm mixing it up. I but, think it was uh, other than that. Yeah. I don't know, with all of, like the uh, ink effects that they got going on. Yeah. I, th- I think I prefer the slightly more zoomed in so you have like a better <laughs> focus on your characters so they don't really get lost in the sauce, you know? But I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited. Some of some of the yeah. like the characters that are in the background look like trash, but I mean it's it's all good. Uh they don't need to look good though, right? Like yeah. Whatever they could be cardboard cutouts for all I care. Yeah, yeah but even characters that existed because they're Final Fight characters that have been yeah. in other Street Fighter games that look bad, and it, they look bad. Like Hugo is in the background of one stage and he looks like trash. Um, <laughs> yeah, but who cares? Well, I mean, let's look at the background characters in uh, Five. Like they're like two FPS moving around in the yeah. background. What, but what like, background very, very bad. <laughs> Honestly, I think any, like, I, I've had a, I've heard a lot of people complaining about the way uh, Street Fighter 6 characters look, and honestly, I don't think anything can get worse than Street Fighter 5. I think Street Fighter 6 is pretty good. But yeah, I, I'm generally really pretty they excited for it. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't know, I, I never got into Street Fighter because uh, I, I got into fighting games not too long ago and I tried to get into Street Fighter V, but I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me. So I'm excited to have like a new Street Fighter game where th- there could be more beginners for me to, to ease into the game a little easier. And, oh, you yeah. know, new mechanics and, you know, everyone can learn at the same time. That's why, like, Strive was uh, so good to learn for, for me and such a good, like, it's already a very good beginner fighting game, right? 
And uh, especially because I caught at the beginning, there was a lot, so much more people to play that, that was around my skill level. So it was a lot more easier for me to learn and improve uh, mm -hmm. since I caught at the beginning. But yeah, with Street Fighter Six, hopefully I'll be able to get into it because I do want to get into Street Fighters. But it's like Street Fighter Five, like with the uh, the timing and stuff, it just felt really weird to me, and I couldn't get into it. Yeah, I get it. It's it's a dry game, and like I mean, I say that as someone who's owned it uh, and played it since like when it came out in 2016. Um, mm -hmm. It also never really had a clear design philosophy. Like they changed what they wanted the game to be like a couple times internally. Um, and that's why like the later systems get more and more complex. But the beginner systems are really simple. Um, and I think that kind of disadvantaged the game early on. Cause a lot of people got into the game and were like, this is kind of flat. Yeah. And they started adding stuff in, but like the core design was already kind of set in place, which kind of ruined it. Um, cause they could only add on additional mechanics. But they and then go we got the final update that added game. more mechanics. Yep. <laughs> crazy it was really funny because like i actually made a reddit thread and i'm like you know what they're gonna add another mechanic which gives like roughly an invincible backdash sure enough like the second last update they did that um so like i mean i feel like a lot of mechanics you could have seen coming because like people were like yeah this game is way too offensive we need to like add stuff in yeah. uh but like it's still just it's just a very weird game like i'm not saying i dislike playing it there's certain characters that i love in that game and i'd love to see come back I think Zeku has an amazingly cool mechanic set. Yeah. Um, there's a couple other characters that have just really cool mechanics that I'd love to see show up again in later games. But for a lot of the base characters, um, you know, like Ryu, <laughs> they had to redesign Ryu like four times. And like I, now people would argue maybe he's overtuned. But I mean, if you have to redesign the character that's supposed to be your base character four times, I think you have like a, a design flaw somewhere in your, your game balancing there. Um. So I'm a big personally, I'm a big fan of like the, the mechanics that they've talked about already. And um, it's because yeah, everybody is going to get um, an FADC. Everyone's going to be able to dash cancel moves. There's going to be it's not just going to be like Ken. Uh, it, everyone's going to get a parry. Yep. Um, it, lo it sounds completely balanced and they're going to have like defensive. Everyone's going to get defensive mechanics. So yeah, it's gonna be really cool. Um, I do like the, the framework looks a lot better. Yeah, the than frame what we started with with five. Yeah, core it, system looks a lot better. It feels yeah. like five was a beta for six. I mean it. Yeah, for sure, and um, it really feels like it's gonna be more balanced because everyone's gonna have similar mechanics. Yeah, uh, instead of like five, where it's widely different depending on their V trigger. Lazy. Yeah, also, I, I forgot. Is Every your character good? Oh, your V trigger is good. You have a good character. Yeah, yeah it was literally that for three seasons. Uh, also, the fact that they're going to have alpha counters in it, too. So not only are you going to have parries, but you're going to have FADC, focus attack uh, cancels, dash, like dash cancels as well. Um, you get to, you know, you get the get off me. So again, tons of defensive yeah. mechanics. So everyone, other than, you know, having a DP, everyone's going to have a chance to kind of, you know, yeah. take on everyone. And so it's going to be, it's going to be really good. I'm going to be Including playing Including new players, by the way, because they're adding a special control scheme where That's right. yeah, it's they're... like one button specials when you don't have a complete so control perf... over your character. So that's like yeah. what you trade away. Yeah. So like you don't have the full like light, medium, heavy. You just have like medium punches and yep. medium kicks and then it kind of like judges for you based on like your distance yeah. it seems like oh it's like close standing far standing yeah yeah it seems but like i think that's it, a yeah. really interesting opportunity for people to learn neutral so i'm, I'm okay yeah. with it yeah <laughs> that that plus like the the two button specials mean that like anyone can execute some cool shit yep uh especially if you you suck at dps good um, a good intro which is the core design philosophy of DBFZ too. I mean, they're like, we want things to be easy to execute, so it's more about like the higher level gameplay. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you get into the gameplay, and you're like, oh wait, this is all high execution. Yep, it's all <laughs> drag. And also, hey, look, you, you don't know what to do. One Dragon frame rush. links. I see. It Good thing this is all easy. super <laughs> friendly for me. I can get yeah. these one frame links. It's like yeah. that dinosaur meme, and it's just like hop right in, and it's like a st uh, like a brontosaurus, so you just keep sinking to the bottom. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh yeah, I mean it's but I mean that's just fighting games in general. It's like, you know, it's always it's always fighting like you you want a fighting game that's easy to start but hard to master. Yeah. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the duel might do that pretty well. It might. No, it won't. I'm sorry, it dude. It will could, not do could, that well. It, it could. You huh. don't know. You remember, like, watching me play and then all of the crazy meter combos where people were, like, getting 75% damage off one combo? Like, they were just oh, yeah, using... yeah, of course, but and that they, can be... That they were doing resets adjusted. off of EX combo. It was just... It was wild. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's what I'm kind of talking about, right? You have your base mechanics that are easy to execute in DNF Duel, but then you also have that higher skill floor with, like, the cancels and stuff. Imagine if the, the DNF Duel beta had a practice mode. Like God, it'd be great. Yeah, I could that actually learn how to, how to play the I mean, game. The game's coming out, what, a month? Like, you'll get your practice mode. I'm just saying. I, look, look, I'm just saying, if you wanted to promote a game, Yes. And you want people to learn how to play, right? Yeah. Put a practice mode. Especially with the servers going down every 20 minutes. I think the funniest <laughs> thing about the no practice no, uh, mode is all the scrub quotes that came out of it. Like, <laughs> that's no fun. Figuring out how to play your character, that's cheating. <laughs> that's right. why they didn't put in practice mode. Well, exactly. The, the only real problem <laughs> with that is that the people that are playing it constantly and are paying attention to the high level players are going to have way more of an advantage than someone who isn't paying attention and playing but it casually. The game isn't even out yet. It's just yeah. a beta. <laughs> like, it'd be one thing if like they did what Multiversus is going to do and have like an Evo tournament based on a beta. That's stupid. I mean, granted, it'll be cool to watch, but it'll be like so many day one scrubs and then the I've people that are good were already good are just going to destroy yeah. other people. Multiversus is super fun. I played it for a bit. It's a really good time. Uh, Unfortunately, I didn't get in. Big so, bad. so I, I, the oh. only, I guess my point is about that beta, though, the DNF dual beta, is that you're actively discouraging newer players from playing because they're going to jump in and they're going to play somebody who's super good and they're going to get demolished. Um, that's the risk for any fighting game. Yeah, I was going to say that that all depends on how many people decide just, to adopt. Just look at one, like Tekken you know? 7. You hop into your freaking first Dan game and this guy's like, oh, I'm an Omega Smurf. <laughs> an Omega Dan first Dan, you know? I think another problem with the no training mode is that there's like a less likely chance of people like fucking around with their character to discover like a problem with like their combo system to for them to fix like infinites and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm saying like I, the high I think it we're benefits... gonna run into infinites in DNF duel. Honestly, I don't think it was a conscious decision not to like not put a practice mode in the network test. It was literally like, we want this to be a network test. Yeah. We don't care about putting a practice mode because that would be a little extra effort for us to do. We don't like, care. They could have done it. it. I think they made a choice not to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't have been conscious when they made that choice. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I, they're 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 working on a budget. I don't think it's a good. I don't. I thought the better choice would have been to make the practice mode. But I mean, if they don't, meh. You know, well, the all the characters are so months. cool, though. Let, Fuck me. Characters do look cool. That game's chunky, though. Um, it is. It is chunky. But they could they could iron it out and it could be a really fun game. Uh, I okay. just like how every character. I, is like I wish the crazy best different for that type game. of character. That's that is how, that is like, pretty cool. Creative and cool. The characters are uh, especially the new one they showed launcher. Let, let me be real with you. I think my only real gripe with the game. Well, other gripe with the game is, hey, I don't think it's worth full price. No, I, I don't think, think so either. Bucks, maybe it's, 40. It's, the roster's too small. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem to have too terribly much going for it. Like, it needs... Probably, probably... Did they say story mode? I can't remember if they said story yeah, mode. Yeah, there's like a light story mode. Also, I, I want to say that I am a fan of Street Fighter Six's story mode. I think they finally actually need to commit to making a real game. You know, other than, you know, just fighting. And I, mm -hmm. I, and also I'm a fan of Final Fight, so it I like Street Fighter Five story mode. Like honestly, I, like I know it was mode? like a it was it was a poorly done version of what Mortal Kombat tried to do, or what Mortal Kombat does. Mm -hmm. But at least someone's trying to do that, it which was, I like. It was just I like arcade I like that kind mode of with mode. some cutscenes. I don't I don't know, man. I'm okay with that. That is story I, as mode. Does not make. good. I'm okay with that. I mean, not everyone's gonna be guilty of your strive, okay? No. True. Which is a just visual a story. novel with yeah. some fights interspersed. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a, a whole novel ass visual me. novel. All right, so so moving on, Sonic Frontier. Did you guys check out the trailer for it? I did. Mm -hmm. uh, Breath of the Sonic. Breath of the Sonic. Honestly, I'm not a, I'm not that big of a open world fan. 
No. Yeah, like I, I, I understand the appeal of it, and I, and I know a lot of people like it, but I, I personally, I, I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of like linear progression because I like, like I, I prefer um story, story driven games the most, so I like the linear progression, and I like to know where I am in the story. I like to feel like I accomplished like maybe the first half, or like I accomplished first, second, third, like main chapters of the story or something like that I like I just like to feel like I progressed a certain amount every time I played so I feel a little bit fulfilled instead of I have no idea where I am I have no idea what is there to do I'm just walking around aimlessly kind of like that mm-hmm. I agree. So you like direction I, strong, yeah, I like the direction. strong narrative direction like, as, as yeah. sad as to say I don't think I think it is extremely way extremely harder to design an open world game that still feels like a good video game than it is to decide to to make a linear game that still feels like a good video game because yeah. like you have to yeah. like where do you put the story you have to like tell a story while like letting the player go anywhere and do anything and that's super hard to do linearly mm-hmm. uh so it's Elden like Ring did it a couple games can do it <laughs> but those have to be those have to be like literally the elite class of game designers I know. most yeah. game teams can't handle it halo infinite couldn't handle it so no, many other couldn't. games can't they handle, handle a lot of things, though. So, <laughs> like, I, if I, someone was describing that game to me, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the other day, and it was literally like, yeah, you go around and like raid bases, but you're Master Chief, and I'm like, that sounds terrible. Sonic whoa. A, <laughs> whoa, whoa, Sonic has a climbing mechanic. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot yeah, of I running around I, as like, Sonic. Sonic is like a famously linear game. Like, I don't know why anyone. Who asked for this? Yeah. Who asked for I don't this? know. Sonic Adventure. It's really strange Sonic because it's Sonic. I, yeah. I'm just happy they let you run around. That's We've had so many weird Sonic games where they're slow. It's yeah. nice to see that we're actually going to go fast yeah. in a fucking Sonic game again. Like, don't get me wrong. It's cool. It'd be cool if it had like open world sections that was like like hub world sections. But like, I, do I need a fully open world Sonic game? I don't know. That sounds weird to me. Yeah, like, I don't know. They, it's a little strange to me as well. Sonic needs to try something it's, it's new. It's odd, but I'm I'm open to it. Why not, right? Yeah. Open Sonic has to, to transition into proper 3D somehow. Uh, hey, God knows Adventure the other attempts classic. were not working. Man, so- Adventure 2 is a classic. So- Sonic is, really one is rough. They're setting a low ass bar. Also, I'll be honest, the uh, the 3D in the open world with the sonic speed looks like a motion sickness case waiting to happen. I was getting motion sickness as yeah, I, was I was watching it. Yeah, I was feeling a little it. sick yeah. when they were running around. <laughs> I was like, oh. No, dog, I heard you like motion blur. <laughs> so we added some motion I'll blur. I'll adjust to blur. it. <laughs> and I'll do what I do with every game that has motion blur. Turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> You're not hiding and anything game from would, me, game. And the game would reveal itself to look even shittier. Because the motion, I think it looks yeah. pretty good. The bad graphics, uh, yeah, it looks good. It's just, it's just way too fast, and it's so yeah. big and spinny, and it's just too much for me to it's handle. Too it's, so- it's too Sonic for you. Gotta go fast. Yeah, it's too. Gotta go fast. <laughs> I'm waiting for the inevitable day someone who isn't thinking at all decides to make like a Sonic VR game. Oh. And proceeds oh, to like make everybody sit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just you just go into your little ball and start spinning your VR. She's like. Oh, oh my god. My god. Or you like run a loop de loop and you immediately just throw up, like never, <laughs> oh, never that's touching a v- so put awful. your VR headset down. This is gonna be sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't wait until you know you're you're actually like eating chili dogs like in the game. It's gonna be great. <laughs> like actively eating a chili dog. No. Yeah. It's my favorite part. You want uh, that, that full dive VR where you could taste the chili dogs. Hell yeah. Um, sign me the fuck up. Let's go, dude. Uh <laughs> Get some Futurama smell vision going with it too. Nice. Yeah, did, did you see there? The Japanese released a, a taste TV. Like it's 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 a TV that you can like you lick it and you can taste things like digital. That sounds I feel nasty, like licking honestly. a TV would be a bad idea. <laughs> that sounds yeah, expensive so somehow. Too. It's the future. Um. All right. So with that, we're not going fast anymore. We're gonna move on. Uh, Diablo. This is one Quintana's one Diablo Immortal. Diablo Diablo Blabortal. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming out. Um, it's, out. Diablo. it's out. It All is right. out. It is Someone out. People t- it's, it. it's out. People Somebody tell me it. about this because I don't know anything about this. Yeah, I also don't know anything about Diablo. So, well, I watched Diablo, Diablo is basically like the first like 
isometric style like action RPG like they they developed the genre essentially and uh people think it peaked with two and I agree well, so now we have Diablo Immortal which is and... what four technically uh, I think it's like no it's not four it's it's more it's a like series. a 3.5. It's not technically in the main line. It takes place uh, before the events of 3 and after the events of 2. Is that why people have guns? <laughs> what? People have handguns. In the trailer. I don't, th- I don't remember anyone having guns. Yeah, somebody has a handgun, dude. I mean, I, could, cool I could see it. But fans wanted it. The technology well, level in Diablo varies wildly. Yeah. But, um, so, like, in 3, they killed off Deckard Kane, who is, like, a pivotal character in the Diabloverse. He's an old man, a member of the Haradrim, which, uh, watch over the primevals and prevent them from coming back or <laughs> doing any nasty shit. He's not doing a very good job, though. That's why he's so, dead. Uh, well, yeah, but people love him, right? So they're like, shit, we killed Deckard Kane. We probably shouldn't have killed Deckard Kane. So, like, for so Immortal, he's another centerpiece character in Immortal because they're like, oh, yeah, we'll just set the game between the events of 2 and 3. That way we can still have our Deckard Kane and eat it too, you know? They, they Street Fighter fought it. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, we killed important character. Well, what if we just go back in time? Everything's yeah, but good. I don't think Street Fighter cares too much about that continuity of killing characters. <laughs> True. True. Fighting game characters can always come back. Or they can literally be dead and still be playable. But um so for Diablo Immortal, it's it was started out as mobile only for like their pitch, and then you had the infamous what, you guys don't have phones? That became a meme because, Ooh. yeah, <laughs> everyone everyone knows that. So, they actually announced it'd be coming to PC as well now. So, then a couple days ago we had it come out, and it came out on the Battle.net launcher, and on Android. I think it also came out on iOS, but it's very mobile it's very very mobile like the the pay to win mechanics have been kicked into overdrive literally to the point where i was playing it for like an hour and i was like this is this is fun I'll, i could keep playing this why not and then i finished like one of my first dungeons and after i finished that dungeon the game prompted me it's like hey would you like to pay a dollar to get more loot from this dungeon that you just finished. Oh man. Yes, tell me. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Oh no, no, so no. So it begins. Yeah, yeah no, did, exactly. you, did you hear someone went and did the math um and they calculated that to fully max everything, it's like a hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yeah, uh it's no. very yes, geared okay, towards whales. It's it's yep. the men the Progression is so heavily gated by money that money you won't even be able to ex- like experience most of the end game content unless you pay or you keep playing for a very long time. Right now, the game is getting review bombed. Last I saw, it was at like a one point seven on Metacritic, <laughs> and it earned it. So. It's a shame because the game itself, right? It's actually a fun game. It's just it's just pocket Diablo. If you like Diablo yeah. or you like action RPGs, you'll just like have fun. Like the yeah. controls feel good, they feel intuitive. It's weird. That's what it I've heard. Plays I've heard well, it, it it plays extremely tight, extremely but, well. The gameplay is great. But it's just layered in microtransaction after microtransaction. Like in the end game, you need gems, legendary gems. And you socket these into your gear. So the average drop rate for these gems is under 1%. 
Or you could pay $100 and you can get a pack of crests that you put into the dungeon like generator to guarantee you get these legendary gems as a drop. And now the difference between power, between somebody who has, who has like the legendary gems and who doesn't have the legendary gems is like 50%. Yeah. And in PvP, all of your stats matter. So PvP is literally completely pointless as like a free-to-play player or if you don't want to just throw copious amounts of money into the game. It's kind of heartbreaking because I love Diablo, but I should have seen this coming. <laughs> like all the signs were there cuz they never really wanted to reveal like their monetizations. And stuff they like should, that. They should just be mask off about it. Like, they should post a meme on their Twitter. It's like, what, you guys don't have money? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. There's, everything's monetized. Like, like, I'd love to see everything. a company just be ref refreshingly evil. <laughs> like, like openly villainous. <laughs> like, uh, complete well, heel face turn. <laughs> there's a fantastic uh, clip clip coming going around where yeah. uh, Asmongold... He does a run of a dungeon as free-to-play, right? And then he does a run of the dungeon paying. And so when he does it free-to-play, like, it drops, like, some common items, maybe, like, a couple magic items. And then he does it paid, and it's just raining, like, the highest-tier legendary items just down upon him. <laughs> like, it's... It's not unapologetic. Well, I'm gonna let my cat in. Like, Hold on. <laughs> they don't. They don't give a shit. <laughs> That's great. I don't That's... think. Like they could have just sold cosmetics and people would have been happy, or they could have just like charged twenty dollars or some shit for the game and not had all this pay to win garbage and just gave like an actual experience. And I think it would have done fucking amazing, like gangbusters, pounding down those dollars, but. So wait, Instead, are you saying they should have just charged like like how much is the game? I assume it's free to play, like most mobile. The free games, play, right? it's free to play, yeah. So like you, you're saying they should have just charged like okay, it's twenty bucks. Yeah, that's a lot for a mobile game, but like yeah. you think upfront people would have paid it? Yeah, I think so because the game like itself is tight. It plays well. It's fun. It, it's just more Diablo, and more Diablo is always good. But all the microtransactions are just ridiculous. Oh, oh, the best part is um, there's a pity system. So, like, if you keep paying, you're guaranteed to keep getting good stuff, right? Well, the way they set it up is, so, for example, you buy that $100 pack, right? And it gives you um, 45 crests to guarantee things. Well, at 50 crests, you're guaranteed a special item. So, if you want to get more crests, you'd have to pay another hundred dollars so you'd have to buy another hundred dollar pack for those five crests that you're missing <laughs> it's so aggressively like ridiculously aggressively monetized it's absurd and i just i just wanted to highlight how shitty it is that like an actual fun game has just been destroyed by these horrible practices how we doing it's actually not even available in multiple countries because of gambling laws, and Blizzard refuses to, like, disclose the actual odds for things. Oh, jeez. And they're like, nah, we'd rather just not release in those countries instead that's, of going through these flag. procedures, yeah. which is just a huge fucking red flag yeah. <laughs> for, like, no, how their systems work. It, it actually blows my mind how, like, laissez-faire, uh, like, loot box like laws are i mean yeah. th there aren't really any that's kind of the whole point exactly but like for casinos like literally it's mandated that not only are their uh odds disclosed like even for like slot machines but are actually accurate like they'll send people in to test it and if it's ever wrong there's like huge fines whereas loot boxes they can do whatever they want and they can change jobs at any time it's crazy yeah it's it's just it's a shitty, shitty landscape. A lot of people are like, oh, it's just how mobile games are. But what if they weren't? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't <laughs> have to. They don't have to be like this. 
Um, People have chose to make it like this. So, so with that, uh, but that's my rant. Sorry, man. Uh, we we got to kind of push it along a little bit here. That's fine. Uh, that that was the end of my rant. So, uh, I'm gonna cut out the the Elden Ring co-op stuff. Uh, I'm gonna move yeah. on to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Professors are uncomfortably attractive. Did anybody see God, the trailer? For... So true. I mean, that's I every know. new generation of Pokemon professors, I though. Can't. They realize there's a market. I don't know about uncomfortably attractive because I think oh, no, there's been hot. better looking. Like there's there's been better looking professors, and Damn. the uh, the male professor the, of this generation, he's not uncomfortably attractive. He just makes me uncomfortable. He looks, he looks, he gives me the x. He gives oh, me wow. the x. He looks a little bit uh, criminal. <laughs> to, a little criminal. <laughs> to, criminal. To, 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 like, you know, sugarcoat it. He he looks a little bit predatory. I don't like him. He gives me the x. I don't like the way he looks. I don't. <laughs> Damn. What? Well, I don't understand why, but okay, fair enough. It's 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 the way he looks, his haircut, it just the whole package. He just, gives does me he hot. just look like I, I a straight alpha douche? <laughs> yeah, it it gives me the ex. But the female professor, very hot indeed. I agree. And I, she's like a cave woman. So like what? Yeah. Damn. Um. Do, does anybody? Uh. Well, I don't know. It's like it's literally like thirst trapping. It's like what school will you be a part of? <laughs> I, su- I suppose they're taking the uh, the. Uh, oh, your rival is also super hot. Like, oh, yeah. oh yeah! Oh yeah! I think Pokemon. the rival looks the best. The rival looks. N- Nimona, the best. you're so hot! Oh, God, what am yeah. I gonna do? I can't beat you in battle. I'm simping for you. Oh yeah, no, I agree with the male professor. <laughs> yeah, that looks so creepy. Like maybe exactly, if they like got rid of like <laughs> if they got rid of like the sideburns on the sides, he yeah. looks a little less sus. But yeah, yeah. he looks kind of sus. What about uh-huh. Le- Lechonk? Anyway. Lechonk? Lechonk. Lechonk is like a layered joke, and it's fantastic. <clears throat> Sorry, Tenny, like, I, I didn't mean to cut you joke? off there. No worries. Uh, and I, I think I think the bigger problem than the uncomfortably attractive professors is the uncomfortably phallic <laughs> legendary Pokemon. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't even see that. I mean, they just have wheels. It's fine. <laughs> this, this is like... Pokemon motorbike races. We're, we're yeah, good. but it's especially the uh, the Pokemon Violet, the legendary Pokemon. It looks so phallic. It, <laughs> it it's it it's kind of like a cock and balls. It, it really is. is. It, it is. Man, they they really keep pumping out these Pokemon games. Like I can't believe how many have come out in the past. You know, couple of yeah. years. It seems like a yearly release at this point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Whoa. they they probably are doing the Call of Duty strategy where they just have multiple. Whoa, like, he does look like like a dick in balls. What the <laughs> he fuck? He does. He does. Yeah. yeah. It, it but, is so uh, weird, especially the uh, the shot of him on the on the hill from the back. That is yep. a straight up penis. Yeah, it's a straight up dick. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Oh my it's just god. Just dick and balls. <laughs> it's so awful. What's it? What's it called? Oops, all penises. No. Holy What's the name hell! Of the new, new legendary that looks like a penis. Uh, uh, it's the one with the jet boosters. I forgot. Uh, if you look at uh, two thirty-two in the Scarlet Pokemon trailer, you'll see okay. the cock and ball of the <laughs> yeah. Pokemon universe. <laughs> but uh, it, in regards to like actual Pokemon, um, it seems like for the theme they're going with like the past versus the future mm. because mm-hmm. like the the male. The male professor whose name I forgot because whatever. Let's call him Professor but, Douche. Profe- <laughs> professor yeah, Sada. Yeah, he looks- <laughs> Pro- professor Sexy Sada over here. She's like a cave woman, right? And then Professor Douche is like in like all like techno, like he has like a techno shirt kind of thing yeah, going on. Yeah, but it's also very lame techno. Like the cave, wo- cave woman aesthetic oh, yeah, is really good design, but Professor yeah, Douche hot. here just looks <laughs> so lame. <laughs> But but then you also have the legendaries mirroring this, right? Because you have like the Scarlet legendary, like kind of like a dinosaur looking motherfucker, and then you have the Violet, which has literally jet boosters for legs. Just, just remember that penises are the future. <laughs> I mean, really what it comes to down to. I mean, I guess you're not wrong. We, we we don't have much of a choice right now. That's yeah, I, I like I, I'm kind of interested, though, because like one of the rumors I heard was that they'll have like 
one of the one of the weird lore things is Pokemon is like understanding why there are like so many different like looking versions of the same Pokemon. So if they have like an ancient versus a modern version of different Pokemon, I think that'll kind of explain oh, that. Some would of that would be really sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah well, be lately they've just been going like regional differences. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I guess the other like with point Yasue versus Alolan and all that shit like that. Well, like ancient versus modern could be a cool way to explain that too. I mean, yeah. I guess it does make sense to have the different Pokemon in different areas be different. Like the Alolan uh, Marowak, is it? I... The one that has like the flames. Probably. He's like a yeah. Soul type. It's, it's Ghost. Ghost. Yeah, yeah. That's like literally my favorite Pokemon design in the past ten years. I want to say. It looks so cool. Um, also, I want to point out to add to that future thing. I really like Chandelure. <laughs> I just want a Pokemon VR game. How hard is that? I, I don't. I would be I down be with great. that. Um, yeah, I'd be pretty down with that. To add to the future thing, if you look at the trailer at 232, they are standing in the same place. Mm-hmm. In, 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 but obviously the two legendaries. So uh, it's two. it's separated by timelines. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, that definitely is an interesting take on the situation. Oh, also yeah. live co-op. That's cool. Oh, that's very nice. That's, that's cool. Yeah, that... like you see in the trailer, you see like the group meet up and then they split off and then they mm. meet up in different places. Like, what? that's crazy. I wonder, I wonder if the buildings and stuff are going to be different in the two versions or if there is some kind of like explanation for why the two people are in the same world or something. Or is the buildings and structure going to reflect the time period that you're in? Do you know what? It, I you think know you're what just going to have like a default time period and then like possibly like maybe you'll shift to like the past or like to the present or some kind of nonsense like that. You know what my theory is about that? I think they actually just want you to buy two different games uh of the Oh, they're selling it as a two pack, yeah. <laughs> oh, so... really? <laughs> no, it's no, no. Oh, you have to buy both of them? No, no, no. You don't have to buy both of them. Okay, that's good. Hmm. I do they are selling a two pack. <laughs> yeah, that's they're selling, actually they're finally cool. bundling them where you can buy them both at the same time. Which that's yeah, genius. 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 It is genius, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I love that, but I think one of the things that always stressed me out was, like, having to buy two separate games. I'm like, I'm just going to buy one. It's fine. Um, yeah, I'll, me too. Um, since I was a kid, though, like, I've, like, up until Gen 3, I would buy every Pokemon. But, you know, I, I, I'm old, so I can't, I can't do that anymore. I can't justify it. Um, let's see. Did anyone have anything else to say about the Pokemans? Uh, trailer. Uh, I'm I'm really sad. I'm I'm torn because I love purple, and I'm like I should get violet, but I don't like the legendary, and I don't yeah. like the professor is good, but not as good as Sada. So yeah. like, do I just get Scarlet and deal? <laughs> but yeah, I, like I personally, purple. yeah, I, I like, like the purple, purple yellow color um, <laughs> scheme too. But yeah, damn it, <laughs> everything else I like Scarlet more. So yeah, so I think I'm gonna end up Violet getting Scarlet. Yeah. yeah. Violet is dead to me, unfortunately, and Scarlet mm-hmm. will be the master race. Unfortunately, I'll they just... got Professor Douche and the Phallic Pokemon. Yeah, it's an unlucky combo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to get Hot Rival in both of them, so I'm fine. Bro, I, guess yeah. I have to pick Violet then, because I can't, I can't pick the same one as you. Okay, that's fine. Have fun with Douchey McDoucher. <laughs> I will. Um, All right. So I'm just gonna I be over here playing Digimon Cyber Sleuth by my lonesome. <laughs> uh, Pokemon's better than Digimon. Get a real game, dude. I want to live in the timeline where Digimon was ex- as successful as Pokemon. That'd be a fantastic timeline. You, you know what I want to live in? I want to live in the World timeline peace. where the true truth. where Monster Rancher was more popular than Pokemon. I'll take that one as well. I love Monster Rancher. Even though the games kind of fell into some less than desirable territory as the games went on. You know, do you remember how, like, you would have to put different discs in to the system to get different uh, monsters? And so, like, people would have a chart. People would have the chart of, like, which ones you would get. Like, oh, if you have the Matrix, you would get the you you get this monster or whatever. Um, Yeah, dude. I, I, missed, I looked I was, forever to get, like, a Joker. It was so hard. Was so I hard. missed weird, like, randomly generated, like, I, I don't, would I call them, like, AR games like that? Like, do you, do you guys remember the weird toy that, like, 
it was almost like a Tamagotchi. There were like monster battles, but to get new monsters, you had to go around like the supermarket scanning barcodes. I, oh, remember, yeah, I remember that. that. Yeah, that yeah. was horrible. Yeah, that, that was sounds... a cool idea. That no, was it was really a cool, cool idea. idea. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Horrible game though. I'm forcing well, you to touch grass. <laughs> game, game. Hey, it made you go outside, okay? You you think? No, it didn't. I was inside a supermarket. I mean, that's outside, right? Kind of outside your house. I, I think it was called Scanners. I, I think, think that it was, was called yeah. Scanners. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like were, with a Z because of yes, the nineties. W- yes, <laughs> it had to have a Z. <laughs> So I've, true. Here's my real question for you guys: which which Pokemon do you guys usually pick? Like, do you pick the the fire, water, or or grass Pokemon? Typically, I mean, grass. Oh, is I'm a masochist. I'm always all I'm about kidding. the water Pokemon, Pokemon, pretty much. Water is like my favorite Pokemon element. I think I gen- I don't know. I usually pick based on what they look like, but I think uh, I fair. have generally picked either water or grass. There are so many memes online about like if you pick grass first, you're gonna be in for a bad time because it's like one but of the, the grass ones times. always look the best. You, you know, I really good. like the uh, the plant themed. Grass ones. usually has the best start too, and yeah. the start is yeah. only like hard part of the Toted Isle games. And ultimately, Sceptile is such a cool design. Yeah, it's well, nice. Or not, not the Sceptile. I don't remember what it starts as. Tre- Trico. Trico. So it's Trico. I'm not gonna lie. As a kid, I was I always picked the fire type. Uh, but now that as, I'm a- as a kid, I also picked the fire type. Yeah, because you want to just burn shit. Because I, ch- I was a stubborn <laughs> you're a child, child yeah. that leveled up my Charmander until my Charmander could beat Misty. Oh, well, yeah. Did it did it disobey so you? So my Charmillion beat Misty. <laughs> no, no. It, it must have disobeyed you then. Uh, OK, I, I'll tell you what. Now, as an adult, I'm a grass type man. I'm just going to say it. Um, grass types are great. I gra- support it. Grass types are great. Also, Bulbasaur, the easiest Pokemon to catch other Pokemon with in Gen 1. Uh, I mean, Gen 1, Bulbasaur is just smooth sailing. You sh- beat the shit out of Brock, and then you beat the shit out of Misty. <laughs> yeah, but I think like my angle is, well, if I can't have an easy starter, I'll just find a- another Pokemon that does have an easy start. So that's why I'm just like, I'm all about having poison or sleep powder or like, you know, the life seed or yeah, whatever. And so, so you're like, an asshole. So, so I can just drain the, the cat to catching Pokemon to like an easier oh, route. Leech seed. Leech seed. Leech seed. So where, you know, like, especially if you over level Bulbasaur and like, let's say he becomes an Ivysaur, um, you can still use Leech Seed and get less and beat lesser Pokemon by just inching them. Because, like, as you kind of, like, get get on, you have to start changing your loadout if you're going to keep catching different Pokemon. Uh, yeah. So I don't have to do that if I have uh, Ivysaur or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, did anybody have anything else they wanted to say before we move on to the last subject, the Yellow of the Week? Uh, my favorite Pokemon is Starmie. Wow, that's a whoa. That's a weird Pokemon. Yeah, who's it? I know. What's your favorite Pokemon? I love Starmie. Tenny. I gotta know. Uh, my favorite Pokemon. Uh, people will call me a furry for this, but Lucario. (laughs) Lucario is fire. Anthropomorphic. I love Lucario. Lucario is what? Lucario is what? Well, he's sick. He's sick. I love him. Oh, okay. He's really sexy. Yeah, I'm a big, yeah, so I'm a big fan of the... Uh, sick. I'm a big fan of, like, the fighting type Pokemons. They're always, like, designed really cool. Yeah, yeah Lucario's really cool. I mean, mm-hmm. I love how he's not officially psychic, but, like, is basically psychic. Like, I don't... He doesn't have a voice. He just talks to your mind. How is he not psychic? I don't get that. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't think about it. Don't Don't worry. Don't, don't worry. So uh, Lucario's fun. I, I'm a Lucario main in Smash. So, well, not just nice. Lucario, but Lucario in Smash is great. Falco. I remember the Falco time I got Lucario. I got mad at you for beating me in melee. I'm never I letting that go. Laser. Yeah, you spam the laser a lot. Yo, I I need that I need oh. that salty run back. We'll get it sometime. We'll All right. Back so, on, what's your favorite Pokemon? Um, I really like Lowen uh, Marowak, I guess, or. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, I actually like I like a few different Pokemon. I like Arcanine. I like um, I like Hitmonchan. I, I don't know. 
I mean, a lot of shitty Pokemon. Poliwag. Oh, I also really like Alola and Ninetales. Alola and Ninetales, yeah, that's cool. Alola and Ninetales is sick. Understandable. Um, uh, what is it? Doug Tree? No, what is it? Uh, tree? What's the tree Pokemon? Hold on, let me see if I can look it up. Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pseudo Wudo. Trevenant. Trevenant. Uh, Pseudo Wudo. Is it like the spooky tree or the Pseudo Wudo? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pseudo Wudo. Um, uh, no, he's a my, rock Pokemon. He is a rock like a Pokemon because he's not actually wood. <laughs> if you don't know your types, it's very confusing. Um, he's Pseudo Wudo. My favorite Pokemon is the trash Pokemon. Ah, uh, identify with him because he's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway, I uh, as, a, as a kid, uh, one of my favorite Pokemon lines was the uh, the Abra line with like Kadabra. And, oh, it's uh, such a good line. Yeah, yeah Alexander, I love them. They were so cool. Yeah, pain the in the ass to catch. Line. Yeah, mm-hmm. Gasly lines, dope. Gengar, sick. Um. So with that, you gonna ask me what my favorite Pokemon is? We d- didn't. Didn't we ask you? I thought you said. Yeah, you said no. you love Lucario. Oh, I, I also <laughs> like Lucario. I didn't What's your say favorite, favorite Pokemon, Pokemon, my guy? War Greymon. War Greymon. Fucking Pokemon fans. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. We're both in grade school, kids. <laughs> I mean, what's your so? What's your favorite Digimon then? Huh? I mean, <laughs> also War Greymon because oh wow, okay. Metal War Greymon with a British accent. Metal, it's just more fun to say. Um, Wait, metal, metal war Greymon. Yeah, there's metal war Greymon. Hold on, Digimon's let me see. weird in this place. It's... I don't think there's a metal war Greymon. Yeah, there is. Metal war Greymon. That's that's the uh, just, that's the old Greymon with a different color scheme. That's, that's it. no, it's it's. Uh, oh yeah. Metal no. War Greymon. Is it? Hmm. Uh, uh. Uh, super metal chrome digitized. I don't know. It's it. Don't don't think about it. Don't think about well, it. Skull Greymon. Yeah, Greymon. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm probably wrong, but it's cool. Um, yo. Anyway, did you guys read about the YouTuber? We're gonna go into the oh no L well, of the week. What, what the YouTuber do? So Nintendo. Uh, YouTuber pulls Nintendo soundtracks after receiving over 500 copyright claims from Nintendo. Oh, I used to listen to this guy's channel. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's see. He had an account with uh, 165,000 subscribers, uh, homes of all uh, kinds of video game soundtracks, but now removes the entire Nintendo library after a dozen soundtracks blocked while receiving over 500 claims from Trigger Happy from the Trigger Happy company. They weren't hosting uploads of commercially yeah. available albums, rather the like the rest of the channel. Blah blah blah. Essentially, this guy got screwed. Um, yeah, I I had a bunch of that shit on like my playlist, and they all just went to shit, and I was like, no, where am I also not gonna get it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Nintendo soundtracks have been like wiped off of YouTube. Yep. It's rough. Yeah. Um, the, the, I think the thing that, that sucks the most here is that really it's all part of a bigger problem that Nintendo hates the people that love their games. Um, mm-hmm, yeah. so true. So incredibly true. Uh, they, they've kind of been doing this for, I feel like years now. And of course, when we had, I think when we had the copyright claim apocalypse of youtube they uh they really crack down on things um they even censor people that like make videos about criticizing nintendo um that's actually been quite oh they'll take down a video that also like applauds nintendo they don't really care Mm -hmm. yeah like um what was it i think it was angry joe he had a video where he was like oh i just really like this nintendo game nintendo's great blah 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 and nintendo copyright claimed him really yeah Yeah. maybe maybe this isn't the the hardest hitting l of the week here that we've ever had but still i i think but it's still sad yeah i love nintendo but they're so stupid they are stupid idiots They, they live in the past and they are run by a bunch of dinosaurs. Like, it's it's still <laughs> 1998 over at Nintendo. Up to the in the Stone Age. 
Their Boy. consoles show it. Yeah, the consoles show net, it. Net code in the Stone Age. Yeah, it's like it's probably, like probably still using dial up. When when Quintessence was saying, "Well, you're gonna get to do co op," it's like, yeah, but on like a shit internet connect. Like yeah. it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna. It's it's not. I mean, it's. I mean, I'm not gonna have online anyway because I'm gonna emulate the game. Oh my Ooh. god! You know, I think I it's think you. I, your door. Yeah, I think I think Yuzu actually has um rollback netcode. I could be wrong. Maybe. So I mean it might be I mean if you if you know if you want to go to jail <gasps> I would never never say things on a public podcast ever again. Want to be know. a dirty dirty pirate. Uh, dirty dirty pirate. Well no, obviously I would buy the game and then emulate it, right? Oh of course. Of course. Like so a good only, only only ethical way to do it. Indeed. Tenny, do you have a do you have a, a Nintendo Switch? I do. Yeah. I don't use it too much though, honestly. Fair enough. Mood. Mine just sits and collects dust. It does. Yeah, it me too. Those Joy Cons are very bright. I'm like, mm-hmm. man, Smash is fun. What else do I play? <laughs> yeah, like there. I don't think. Yeah, there isn't really any particular games that I really enjoy playing on there, so I don't really open it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think. I think and the games it, that are good. But then again, my PlayStation's sitting right next to it, also dormant. So, <laughs> yeah, and the my... games that are good on it get like 20 FPS. So, are they really good? 30 yeah, if you're I lucky. Just rip yeah. out my heart like this. Yeah. I mean, I, I sort of have the same feeling about uh, the Switch. I think, I think the the biggest mistake of the Switch is not making a Switch Pro. I think they're gonna sorely regret that. Yeah, but they don't want to split um, their user base. Yeah. They you... tried to do that with the new 3DSs, and that did not go over very well. Like, they had those exclusive, like, to new 3DS games, and people were like, what is this garbage? I can't play it on my normal 3DS? I think, ultimately, what's going to wind up happening is when they make a sequel to the Switch, they are going to have it be backwards compatible with performance improvements. I mean, I think if that's... Yeah, the, the Swatch is going to do great. The Swatch. The Switch yep. 2. Uh, yeah. The Switch U is what they're going to call it. Oh, the oh, shouldn't do that. Yeah. I don't I don't know how they're ever going to top the... I think they're still going to ride out the Switch, considering it's... Uh, I said the, they're going to ride it out. Yeah. And it, it is the oldest. It's the oldest current console. That's what kind of blows my mind. It's It's older than the PS5. Uh, by a lot, it's older than the Xbox. Yeah, but S no, or nobody X by a lot. But nobody has a PS Five. I mean, I've heard even if I had one, it'd still be collecting one, dust I've next to my PS Four. Yeah, I just don't console game anymore. <laughs> but my my friend says that they have a PS Five. I don't believe them. I've never seen it. <laughs> Unfortunately, my friends brought well, over his PS Five, so I can't use that joke. Look, listen, I'm pretty sure that it was just like a. Two PCs duct taped together. <laughs> nah, dude, I played Returnal I don't and Ratchet you. and Clank. I think which are the lo- only games I wanted to play. See, so the problem is, I, is, I hit my quota. You haven't showed me a PS5, so I don't believe you. I think you're part of the conspiracy. <laughs> I'm just it's like, saying. if it's flat, I like, I won't believe it until I see from space that a PS5 exists. Yeah, man, that 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 the PS5 is flat. Until um, I'm playing a PS5 on the International Space Station, they, just, they don't exist. <laughs> it's my only criteria. Um, all right, guys. Well, I think that's it. We can probably start and wrapping do up. We wanna, do we want to do the the uh, the the other L of the week I suggested? The the other the other story, or we just we wrap? I think we're we're done. Yeah, it's about we're about we're three wrapping. hours okay, deep right now. We're wrapping. Um, we're we're right. over three hours. Uh, but other other than that, yo, Tenny, where can people find you? Oh, uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Tenichi or twitter.com slash Tenichi underscore. <laughs> All right. Uh, Quintessence, where can people find you? Oh, you can find me playing games and being bad over at uh, twitch.tv slash Quintessence HD. Awesome. Uh, August, uh, where can people find you? Uh, most episodes of the backlog, same back time, same back channel. So uh, whenever we do this, usually. Right. 
All right. Um, I don't know why you bother asking. Except for today when I was a surprise guest. <laughs> because if I don't ask, he's going to mention it. He gets, he gets mopey. He gets upset when I don't <laughs> ask him what, where people can find him, which is just here. where And, and he does it every time I don't mention and, it. And like, he else. says, aren't you going to ask me where people can find me? <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, guys, uh, you can find the backlog on Twitter, Instagram, uh, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, we're on everywhere you can find podcasts. Uh, we're Of course, we're on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the backlog. Uh, internet permitting, we will be playing uh, some games come Wednesday, as long as my bit rate doesn't die. I think we're going to be playing some more Tekken 7. And hopefully next your ISP, week... Dude. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And hopefully next week we can uh, we can get some more streaming in and we don't have to pre-record our everything. Uh, so, Tenny, yeah. I, wa- Tenny, I want to thank you for, for coming on the podcast and I really appreciate you being here. Um, no and, problem. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we'll, we'll have to have you on again Great. sometime. Uh, hopefully thank not doing uh, three-hour sessions. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it, is, it is kind of exhausting doing, doing this long. I'm not going to lie. Um, but other than that, guys, I mean, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fresh. <laughs> oh, I'm, are you? Coming in halfway has an advantage, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just want to point out the fact that uh, can we, we all point out the fact that when we do have guests, this means that August could be here. Yeah, but I did, he's I'm just usually, not. I usually don't get back home in time. I so, didn't like, even consider this possibility. I just saw people in the podcast channel, but like I was so. I was trying to be good. First, I went and checked if there was a stream. And I'm like, okay, there's no stream, so maybe they're just prepping. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I messaged you twice. You didn't respond back to me. So I logged in, and you're doing it. And I'm like, oh, no, I didn't Well, I guess I like... got to stay now. Yeah. Now I forever mean, wow. we'll I'm be not going to leave. That would be rude. We're so. going to forever <laughs> yeah. guilt trip you for not showing up if there's you a guest. You pop in, you see there's people, you just kind of like. I just hide. <laughs> <laughs> just turn the, the laptop down. Right. All right, guys. So we will catch you soon. Peace out, y'all. Peace out. Bye. Bye.